We're live. Take it away, Alex. I got to go do something. All right. Well, welcome, welcome to the thousands and thousands of viewers out there patiently waiting for us to join. We're so glad you're here. Two minutes early, actually. So for the people who are pre-gaming, lining up early for us, we are glad you're here. Um, I think we got a fun topic tonight. Glenn's probably yeah, working on getting that tonight. banner going, but... Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really kind of excited for this conversation because I don't know about you, Glenn, but the 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 artist I pick truly, hey Trevor, the artist I pick truly, I don't have anything against. I'm interested per se, but I just have nothing of them, and I probably just need a little push. And I'm excited for th there's a couple artists that mean a lot to a couple of the people on the channel. Oh, cool. And so I'm excited and also nervous for that response of, what? you oh, know, yeah. that's annoying already. I've got like, uh, one, two, three artists that I've never heard a record by. And I got one that I've kind of already started my journey. So, all right. Uh, I got, a, I got a long list. <laughs> yeah. I have to just pick and choose based on the vibe. So you guys are younger than me. You got a long, you got, you know, that's right. You got a bigger <laughs> pot than I got. That's fair. We are younger. Jason, not by much, but still younger. <laughs> um, not by much. Damn, I just thought of a couple others off the top of my head while you were just saying that, and I wrote, I forgot them already. I told you I'm old. <laughs> well, and it's funny, too, because some of them, we'll obviously dive into this more, like, there are some of them that I do have, like, a bias towards of, like, you know, maybe I heard that one song when I was in high school, and it was the worst song I've ever heard. And so, therefore, I never put any effort into listening to that artist ever. Is that fair? I don't know. We'll find yeah, out. That is fair. I feel um, like my I feel like my lighting's off, Alex. Oh no! <laughs> ah, there's the sway. Come on, yeah. I've done that so much in my life, like artists that I just went. I don't care about these people at all, and then later went. I got to give them a try, and then freaking, they've turned into my favorite bands. Right, Jason. What? We got like home improvement over there. What are we doing? Sorry, I was trying to. to uh... is here. We got uh, Trevor. Good evening, Trevor. Happy New Year to everyone. Good evening, Charlie. Good evening, Marsha. Marsha. Good evening to Trevor. Uh, I get the feeling Trevor's going to say good evening to Marsha, but I think but... Marsha has set the record for the amount of um, recommendations said. In the VC or in the vinyl tag 2024 of the amount of people who have recommended her channel. Well, now you know what that means. She's got to start making videos. I think that's the goal, right? Like, we got to, you know, put some pressure on. And now the pressure's on. And I love it too because she's probably they, saying, Jesus Christ, would you quit staying my name? I know. She's like, I got to get out of here. And I love it too because they all say like the same thing. And they're absolutely right. They're like, she's so laid back and nice and passionate and just sits in front of her christmas tree and talks about music and i'm like that's the dream that's what we all want to do all year round yeah um joel made a comment on one of my videos today and said check out the good rats album tasty anybody know this band no do not know the good rats me neither oh, i gotta get a paper. No. i gotta get a paper and a pen for this is gonna be a a high homework uh i think this might be one of those nights where there's a lot uh, hopefully a lot of people are gonna uh chime in are going to contribute so i didn't put i didn't do a banner Duh. Uh, find a pen. uh well I, I gotta say at least for that record tasty that he's talking about might be one of the best album covers i've ever seen in my life So, you know, that has any interest to you. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I, mean, I would jump into that album cover. That's the thing. is, like, if you saw that in a store, you wouldn't even need to know. You'd be like, I'm interested. Give me that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I made a note. That's my first one of the night. That'll be interesting. It would be funny if we could all come up with something that we think um, mm. Each of us oh. would like, like rather mm -hmm. than just me to say uh, at Sam throw out, you know, yes, because I know he hates prog rock. That wouldn't make sense. But if I could yes, think it's on my list. Oh. something that's, uh, you know, that's a good point. wheelhouse to yeah. mention. 
Well, I think that's helpful, right? Because like oh, Rob, oh, Rob's here, chomping at the bit. I'm sorry, Rob. Hey, been waiting back. I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting back there longer than Sam's been waiting in hair and makeup. Well, we were having an intelligent conversation, so we didn't want to add you until. Well, we were that there. makes sense. That's good. <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, how's it going? I've, I had, still an like inter- I've had an interesting day today. Why? Tell us. Ooh. I had to do jury duty today. Oh yeah! Oh, wow, it's an interesting trial. It was, no, it was it was a Canadian school. thing too, huh? It was jury selection, and thank God I did not get picked. Oh, so did they send you home? Yeah, because it was an attempted murder trial. Wow! Ooh, right? Been good. I would love to do that. Yeah, but you're retired and have nothing else to do. I have. Well, I got picked when I was working, and I could hardly freaking wait. My boss didn't want me to do it, but I, I was. I, 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 got screwed out of it but uh i would i would love to do that glenn would come home every day and tell everybody about it on youtube <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i got this trial going totally. on <laughs> <laughs> the guy's guilty as hell yeah. like, right away and it, i just tell by his face <laughs> don't you know you can just lie and get out of you yeah but what i mean uh, it's not hey. quite that simple i think Canada is a little different than the states. Well, how did you get so? Why would you want to do that? Like, I so what they did is there was like a hundred people to try and get twelve. So they would they pulled twenty and twenty, and the rest of us went downstairs. And then the lawyers and the judge went through those twenty and twenty until they got a full jury. And thank God they didn't need to call us up to. Um, the so then they don't keep you for the because when i did it in uh, toronto this is going back quite a few years like the early like maybe 2000 or something and they uh made you stay for a week oh. and um they gave you like a color number that you're in the purple group or the red right group, i guess they whatever. do that if there's more the cases but they there's only... your color okay all the purple people get up to the courtroom right but there's only there's only one trial going on right now so yeah they filled the jury. They don't need anyone else. But it's Sam. Oh, J- James is in Canada. Okay. Sam on the way. My boss actually told me, he says, tell him you're a racist to get out of it. Because my, well, my company actually said that. I said, I'm I was, I was going to get a MAGA hat. You know? Especially because I am not. <laughs> I'm the furthest thing from a racist that ever walked the earth. I would never say that. Manson or OJ trial, I'm not interested. Yeah, I know. I, I would do it. I wish they'd ask me now. I would love to do it. Yeah, I'll give them your number then. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know how the heck. Uh... Unfortunately, I'm not a racist. No, fortunately, you're not. <laughs> no, not unfortunately. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he wants to be. I don't know. Yeah. It's good to have goals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no Sam yet. What time is it? He they says he's on his way. They're still mm-hmm. blow drying his on hair. Way. Yeah. At the hair, on at the the hair way. Salon. What's that mean on the way? Well, he's, they're blow drying his hair at the hair. You know salon. what? Of a, this, speaking something like that, same thing. You know when you walk up to a store and they've got a sign on the door and it says be back in five minutes? Well, when the hell did you leave? Yeah. Like, am I waiting for one more minute or am I waiting for five minutes? Like, put the time down that you're going to be back. Right. Like, I'll be exactly. back in five minutes. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> I'm standing outside freezing my ass off. It's 20 below zero. Have I got to wait another 30 seconds or another five minutes? <laughs> so we have, we have, so I don't know if you know, Glenn, but Sunrise Records bought For Your Entertainment, which is a U.S. chain. I don't know if you knew that or not. So that's the F-I-E Sunrise people out there. The Sunrise here in my town is now an, uh, For Your Entertainment, FYE. And they're at the mall and they suck, but they do have records. Uh, So the wife and I were up there to do a couple errands at the mall. And there was a couple of records we were going to go get. And it was like a, during the day, it was like a, you know, like a Tuesday at 11 o'clock or whatever. And I get there and the friggin' screens pulled across the, the store and it says back in 30 minutes. I'm like, okay. So we go and do our thing and I'm in the store across the way doing something and i see the guy come back and change the freaking sign saying back in an hour and i'm just like it was like the second day in a row i'd been to this damn store and the guy wasn't there so i actually sent an email to the 
friggin' head office of Sunrise going, like, have more than one person so your goddamn stores open during yeah. mall hours. Like, yeah. for God's sakes, they never responded. But I've had that happen in the Sunrise store in Belleville, too. The same ah, thing. Oh, go, I'm walking over, I go to, I want to go in and grab something. And it's uh, and usually when I go into a, like a mall store, there's something I'm particularly buying. Like, I don't go, I don't usually browse for records at a mall store. I don't either, but. As but, far as I'm concerned, yeah, no, and then you walk up in the door, it's locked. And if you're in the mall, then you your store has to be open from the minute the mall opens till the minute the mall closes. That's right. You can't pick your hours. So then I saw him go in with his lunch like 10 minutes before he said he was going to be back. I just stood there and banged on the cage till he answered the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm like, <laughs> I saw you change the sign. You've been gone for an hour. Fuck you. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Josh. Alex is right. Uh huh. Yeah, good call, Alex. The Alberta comment was spot uh, on. <laughs> my ex wife got out of service duty because being Colombian, her English wasn't good enough. See, to me, when I read that, I just see that Roy is even more interesting than we already thought he was. <laughs> yeah. I think Roy needs like, Roy is like our Forrest Gump, except intelligent. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Roy, a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't come back, just keep waiting. <laughs> oh, fellas. Happy New Year. Hey, John. Hey, John. 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 Jason, how can you live in that blurry house? I have changed my settings, John, and now it's portrait mode, so it's not following me around. I, I can't win with, with these guys. Amazon is always open. It's too damn easy. Can I, can I just do one public service announcement before we get started? Yeah. I'm at 991 subs. No oh. freaking way. Come on, everybody. Oh. Nine people. Any help would be greatly oh. appreciated, folks. This would be so great for this to happen right now. And can I also make a public service? There's 26 people watching. It'll probably get upwards of about 40. How come when you watch the video back, only 10 thumbs up? I know. Like, what is that? You're sitting there watching for two hours, and you can't just... I'm going to thumb up it right eye? now. For one I, just, I just put my thumb, thumb right up there. Jeez, come on. Guys. Put your thumb right up where? Uh, well, I'll, I know where I'll stick my thumb if you don't give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. There, I just thumbed up it. <laughs> Was that uh, a ladies' man? Ladies' man with Leon Phelps? Get you on up there like a pond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just don't jump a shark. No. Rob changes hat to a Canucks hat. I thought you guys out west liked the uh, the uh, Jay, Blue Jays. Where do you live, James? Are you in BC or what? It, it's it's either this or the Montreal Canadiens or yeah, we have, we like the Blue Formula Jay, One. Yeah. Take your pick. <clears throat> hey, Montreal. Hey, everybody! I don't think I have been to a mall in twenty years. That's a good thing. <laughs> you're Dan. You're, I hit the light already. Thank you. <laughs> Young LP lovers, Thanks, thumbs Chris. up. There we go. Your audience is thumbless. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> I with no thumb. give, us, give us a knuckle. I don't care. And you're out of that. <laughs> the knuckle. Knuckle up. That's my move. They're giving thumbs are just giving the thumbs. <laughs> Maybe there just needs to be more options. <laughs> you, can, you should have one of these. <laughs> I just say, can you read between the lines? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fellas? <laughs> Brian? Shopping malls in Thailand, the main shops don't open until 11 a.m., but close at 11 p.m. That's pretty good hours. That's all right. Yeah. Um, so tonight we're going to uh, talk about artists and, and bands that we really haven't paid much attention to, but we're really interested in pursuing their catalog. And uh, so um, I think it should be a pretty interesting topic. Um, if anybody out there wants to throw some names out there or more obscure people you think we should check out. Now, Roy, I want uh, you to pay attention because uh, I'm going to put one out there you're going to be very happy about. So, well, if, Oh, boy. And I would add, too, I think when we were talking about this, you know, obviously it's going to be different for all of us, but, you know, these might – some of these might be bands or artists that we have just had, like, a blind spot to or – Maybe we've always heard about them, but just never really dabbled, or it's been intimidating, uh, or something, you know, I, all over the place. Um, 
but really this is just in disguise a chance for us to mention all the artists and albums that we don't have and hope that someone sends them to us. Yeah. And plus we can help each other out if it's something we're familiar with, somebody else isn't. Because if you look at like, like take an artist like Miles Davis, imagine starting like, nope. and then going, okay, I think I'll look at all, all his, the Miles Davis. Where do I start? Which ones are yeah. posthumous and which one, what's they're the better one? What, like it's impossible. And Dylan's another one, probably, uh, um, Jimi Hendrix, there was only three studio albums plus the live album that he released in his lifetime, but there's 15,000 Jimi Hendrix albums. <laughs> like for a newbie walking into a store going, oh, you know, you're, it's crazy. Yeah. It's very daunting and intimidating. Mm. Larry has no thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you ever see him try and hold a cup? It's a mess. Has anyone checked out Harry Styles? I was really surprised. Who? Oh, yeah, John. I was going to say, some idiot mentioned Harry Styles on one of his videos. It was you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody go over to John's house and take his man card away? Oh, come on, Glad. <laughs> Glenn. Yeah, Zappa's another one. There's a hundred and... I think we're up to 129 releases now. And 70, 70 some of them were, were in his lifetime, and the other ones have been released officially, but through the family estate, but not, uh, you know, crazy. Uh oh, Brian's kicked off. He's saying the W word. He's talking about his ween. I like this Mazzy guy. Mazzy's main entertainment. He's got. Two of my major bands on there. Alex yeah. may know the Surefire Soul band. Is Mazzy here? No, that no, Mazzy, Mazzy. Uh, the oh, Mazzy. Mazzy. Mazzy and Brian. Yeah. I was going to ask you about War on Drugs before we get started, Alex. You mentioned you're a big fan mm -hmm. of that uh, first album, which I think is a really good record, too. Are you a Kurt Vile fan? Well, so that's, that's funny. I'm not a huge fan. I have all of War on Drugs stuff, but I'm not a huge fan of their super droney, psyche. Their uh, first record was with Kurt Vile, and then so you wouldn't like Kurt Vile. Then. So I've listened to Kurt Vile, but yeah, I'm funny. I actually remember listening to um, what's the one that you love? You Watch think? my moves. Yes, I've I've listened to that and felt lukewarm about it. Oh yeah, it's really yeah. drone. Like you got to really, yeah, yeah. You either got to like that or just hate it. I don't think there's a, anybody would say, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Everybody's doing the uh, vinyl tag. I think we've all done one, right? Oh, Sam hasn't yep. done it yet. Sam is slacking off. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's been I great. I just connected with this guy today. I just started. I, I can't calling believe how channel. busy I've been trying to watch them all. Like, it's been insane. I just noticed today that Rachel has started a Beatles tag. So, as a Beatles fan, I got to do it. Oh, my God. Oh, that's great, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming by. Stay as long as you can. Um, Jeff and I are getting together on Saturday to go record shopping. John, John, I was just teasing. I, I actually have <laughs> heard a couple of tracks from Harry Styles, and you're right; it wasn't bad. It was kind of rock, and it, I, I'm, I was just making light of Harry Styles thing being a boy band guy. And what band was he in? One Come on, Ken, you're the boy band expert. One, One Direction. One I, direction. Was, I was just waiting to speak for somebody to say hello to me. Nobody said hello to me. I said, no. oh, 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 okay. Well, hey, we, <laughs> I was going to hey, say how long, how, how long I could go. Don't say hello to Sam. Well, clearly we know who the Harry Styles of our group is. The big Harry shot. Styles has a lot of women after that's him. That's so. not Harry Styles. That's Hair Styles. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Nice. He was in One Direction. <laughs> how are you today, Sam? I'm, I'm good, gentlemen and others. It's nice to have you, Sam. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see you all in 2024, the year yeah. the year of our Lord, where I turn 30. Oh, Lord. Since, since we're talking oh. about Sam, everybody should check out the Violent Community podcast today. Sam makes his first appearance. Uh, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. I promise. Yeah. You. Are you, can you tell us what the topic is? Or yeah, yeah, because we kind of teased it last week, Rob. We did during the video. So we're raw. I came up with the idea. Rob came up kind of with the title. It's um, generational 
generational collecting or something along those lines, what you called like it, um, where we talk about kind of trickle down influence on record collecting and music tastes and how it's, you know, how we take it from our parents, our family, you know, older friends and how it's worked its way down to our own habits and that sort of stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's a good topic. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it was a fun episode. Turned out good. I haven't posted the video yet. It's edited. I'll probably upload it tomorrow or something. But the audio's up. Oh, hey, Brian. He said hello, too. <laughs> a deeper understanding. What band is that? Deeper understanding. That's War on Drugs, too. Oh, okay. Everyone, Happy New Year to you all. Happy New Year. Bonjour. Okay. Yep. Marsha owns the vinyl tag. Agree, Steve. Mm-hmm. Glenn, think about bringing that Kirk Vile to the record exchange. I well, don't think anybody... I, I I don't know if I lent it to Larry once on an exchange or not. I think he hated it. You while, um, yeah. while we have Trevor on, just again, Trevor, thank you. He sent me a couple of um, CDs that um, I was missing in my KISS collection. Mm. I do have a lot of KISS records, but I was missing two stalwarts in the KISS catalog, and Trevor sent now, them away. Now you just need music from the Elder. <laughs> I know Aaron and Chris Profi love that album. Mm-hmm. Is that the one yeah. that they put out right when they did like the uh, the movie too, like the superhero yeah. movie? Yeah, yeah, it's like their big. This is awesome, record. French Vinyl Attic. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> if you like Tom Waits or Leonard Cohen, try Nick Cave. I love Nick Cave. I, I'm a big fan. Yep, I have a uh, quite a few Nick Cave records. I didn't know that's no, my book. And I will um Hi, Sam. And, don't uh, salt St. John. Brian and I have a video coming out on his channel tomorrow that I won't give away, but it's part of his uh does this is this album really that good series that we've kind of resurrected. Mm. So be on the Beatles lookout. Are my favorite boy band. <laughs> so they were a little older than boys, but they were close. Hey FEA. I'm burned out on the vinyl tags. Twenty questions is too much. Hmm. I'd love mm-hmm. to be 30, Sam. Well, hey, all the world's a That's state. what they all say, Marsha. Sounds like a good episode. Bonjour, FEA. Looking forward to seeing the video. I love it when you speak French, Jason. Mm-hmm. I, you you know what? It's, it's final French, album. Is your French favorite vinyl addict thing. guy. I, he, repli- he, he said something in one of my videos uh, at the comment, and I tried to respond in in French, and I had to give up because I thought it would be too. Uh, <laughs> it would have been, been so poor that it probably would have been insulting. But I, I put the effort in. It was a good thirty seconds, and I was like, I forget it, forget it. <laughs> and he's French. I think French. an artist whose final album is your he's favorite. French, French, so our Canadian a, French is an abomination. I know, Dan. That's a great question. It is a good question. I can't off the top of my so, head. I don't. I don't well, like it. For the, the for the okay. three Beatles, I'm Electric for the three Beatles people. Jimi Hendrix, Electric Ladyland. I well, so here's my. Do y'all consider Let It Be or Abbey Road as the final Beatle record? Abbey Road. Oh, it's a tough one. But Abbey Road recorded last and was supposed to be their last, even though it was released. I mean, technically, yeah, Abbey Road. But I mean, that's what they meant. They meant that to be their swan song with you know the end and all that. But yeah. they did get together in 1970 to do some dubbing on Let It Be. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, Let It Be comes at the end of my Beatles catalog in my collection. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Hendrix is the only one I can think of. Maybe I, Pink, Pink oh. Moon by Nick Drake, but again, he only had three albums. Yeah, same with Jimmy. Yeah. Come on, guys. You know Sam is sensitive. I am. I've got a, I've got a box of Kleenex right here for my tears, Bob. Hey, for that. <laughs> my son wants me to listen to singer-songwriter Ray. He calls it 21st Century Blues. Bands you should explore in 2024. Gaslight Anthem. I am aware of those guys. California Honey Drops. I'm a big fan of. Great band. And Vintage. I've never heard of them. Yeah, California Honey Drops are great. I've been 30. (laughs) 30 at least twice. Yeah, I'm two and a half times 30, I think. (laughs) I have four (laughs) open years to thank for the introduction to music growing up from the Beatles to Zeppelin. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I... I had nobody. I had people introducing me to Johnny. I had nobody. Frickin <laughs> yeah. I did have a next door neighbor, though, who was older than me. And uh, 
she invited me over one night because she knew I was heavy into music, the Beatles and stuff like that. It was probably around 64, 65. And she played James Brown live at the Apollo for me. Since you I think she was it. inviting you over for something else, Glenn. No, no. My mom was there. And oh, okay. Her moms were there. It was really very, uh, yeah. That would be awkward then. And I was like 11 years old. Oh. So anyway, she was like uh, probably 15, 14, 15. Anyway, she, uh, yeah, so she... I think my mom was telling her that I was a music guy, and she said, "Oh, Glenn's got to hear this record and bring me over here." James Brown live at the Apollo blew my freaking mind. So Hackney Diamonds won't qualify, eh, Glenn? Sure. What do you want with Hackney Diamonds? I will say, Glenn, I know, I know you put Rough and Rowdy Ways really high on the Dylan catalog, mm. but I mean, oh, technically. Yeah. The- they consider Shadow Kingdom his most recent. You're in our job. <laughs> the Abbey was from Dad's eight track. Oh God, eight tracks. Oh, Black yeah. Angels. If you are into neo psych rock, Band of Gypsies counts in the Hendrix canon. Yeah, but it's Jimi Hendrix. It's not the Jimi Hendrix experience. I'll write down Black Angels there. Jimi That's Hendrix Jimi Band of Gypsies. Different Black band. Angels. Okay, let's start. Who usually kicks? Let's let Jason kick off tonight. He, I don't think he ever gets to start first. Okay, an artist, an artist that I want to know more about, an artist that I want to explore, and I have zero uh, experience with, but I just know that they're highly regarded and highly respected. I hear um, Noble Records, Dylan talking about this all the time, and it's about time to to dive in. And I'm looking at you, Sam, as maybe the guy that might be the most likely to know anything about where to start with Towns Van Zandt. Ooh. <laughs> Me too, Jace. Uh, yeah. He wasn't on my list, but when you mentioned him, I'm like, yes, same. Where do I go with Towns Van Zandt? Oh, I'm just going to assume to start, I, you know, when in doubt, I'm just going to start at the, the guy's first album for sure. But right. that's, you know, a guy that gets a lot of love and, uh, and I never actually gave him the time of day yet, so I'll I'll go there first. I mean, Steve Earl made a comment about Towns Van Zandt and said, "Towns Van yes. Zandt is the greatest songwriter in the history of America, and I will stand on Bob Dylan's coffee table and tell him so." I know, isn't that wild? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm gonna... not give the guy the time of day, right? Like uh, the um, I'll tell you. So the way, speaking of Steve Earl, the way that I got. And I'm not huge into Towns Van Zandt, um, meaning like I don't have hardly any of his stuff. But Steve Earle, if you like Steve Earle, he does have an album called <laughs> yeah. um, where he covers Towns Van Zandt cuts and you know, like the hits like Poncho and Lefty and things like that, but also the deeper cuts. And it is fantastic because um, Towns Van Zandt kind of has a voice like Chris Christopherson and that Christopherson has a very, very weak, like one dimensional voice, but he's getting his song across, you know, like any good, you know, outlaw Austin, um, Texas songwriter. So for me, I would start, I would start with that Steve Earle album to be honest with you. They're straight ahead cuts. I know Glenn likes that album. Love it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just called Towns. And if there's a deluxe version out there that I'm sure it's on streaming, the second disc is or the acoustic version. It's just him on the guitar. Yeah, he does do one album just on doing all the songs acoustic and the other one with the band, with the, his band. But yeah, it's it's awesome. But there's great a song there called Mr. Gold and Mr. Mud that he does with yeah, his that's great son, song. Justin. He does it with uh, his son. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Ooh. it's, it's kind of, it's like well, a lot of lyrics. Torpedoes do that song, Sam? We, we could. It's a lot of lyrics. I know. It's like uh, subterranean homesick blues kind of lyrics. Um, I got a comp, Towns Van Zant comp. I actually got to see Towns Van Zant back oh, in really? 90. I'm gonna say 93. Um, at Mariposa Folk Festival, but uh, I've got a, can- a comp that's really good anthology 1968 to 1979. It's got like I don't know, like 50 songs on it, but I, I don't know if you guys are into CDs or not, but. I might start with a comp if there's a compilation vinyl. Um, yeah, I always, st- I always start with that. When, I, when you guys recommend a new artist or something and I go into to stream it through Apple, and of course you have the option of just going to their hits, you have the option of going to comps or live albums or whatever, but I struggle with going right to the hits because I feel like that 
I, I don't know if that's cheating or not, or if it's just weird, but I kind of want to just go right to square one and see, okay, how did this guy emerge? What did he put out for? <laughs> yeah. go from there. You mentioned, you mentioned Dylan. I know like his, like one of his prized possessions is the self-titled. So just like the one where he's like sitting at the table or whatever in the kitchen. Uh, yep. That would be my place. I mean, I think it's hilarious that, uh, love these guys to death. I think it's funny that you were like, I'm looking to where to start with these guys. And they're like, check out this covers album by a different guy. But- yeah. <laughs> Which I will because I like Steve Earle a lot. In fact, my big my biggest concert, my non going to a concert regret, my small ass town here in northern BC, Steve Earle came here a number of years ago and I didn't go and that was so stupid. What? It was, it was a small venue. Like we're talking, like I don't know, three or four hundred people. It would have been like the most amazing. Oh, he's into it. He's great live. Did he get lost while he was Sasquatch hunting? That's the the album I was looking for. It's just, it's just self-titled. Yeah, that one. Yeah, this is self-titled. Yeah, Um, yeah. this has. I mean, this the first song for the sake of the song is beautiful. Waiting around die. That is like full on blues. Like, and I mean, I know Jason, you like the blues. Um, Colorado girl is fantastic. Lungs is a fantastic song. It's about yeah. you know, a guy who's, you know, his, his literally his lungs are collapsing, like him dying and talking about like every breath is like struggling. Um, I'll be here in the morning. If that's a song that I sing a lot. Beautiful ballad. I mean, it's gorgeous. Um, Quicksilver Dreams of Maria is fantastic. None but the rain. I mean, this is this is a, a top notch record. This is so similar is that to, his debut? Y- no, it's it's this is his second third. No, the, the first one is um, for the sake of the song. It's the third. Third, a third from 1970. Yeah, 69. It's from 1969. But it, it, it's a it's a it's a killer record. I mean, it really it's a good mix of country. It's got some blues. Um, it has the ballads to it. I mean, this is the one I would start with, Jason. I like I like uh, when I'm listening to artists like that. I like just like. Bare bones, acoustic guitar, bass. Me too. I this is hear, close to it. Yeah. I don't want to hear uh, steel guitars and stuff like that until I'm used to the artist. I want to hear the. Well, that's that's what that's how I with, with Towns Van. I mean Towns Van, with Justin Towns Earl, who obviously this was his godfather. Was yeah. you know, Towns. His best stuff is the stuff on YouTube where it's just him and the guitar, you know, playing like the radio stations. Um, that I prefer that to his albums. Yeah. So I wish one of these days I would like for them to release like the, some of those live radio broadcasts. That would be awesome. But yeah, good. Yeah, good was, uh, what a life that guy had. There's a there's actually a documentary on him. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever seen it or you can find it, but uh, man, it's really really sad and poignant. And he he was in and out of mental institutions and the battles with alcohol and you know yeah. But he, I mean, he he was hanging out with those guys. I mean, Steve Earle and like Rodney Crowell, um, like were hanging out with those dudes. Yeah. Him and uh, uh, Guy Clark, Jerry Jeff. Imagine sitting around. Imagine being able to sit around with Guy Clark and Towns Van Zant when you're learning how to write songs. Yeah. Imagine being like 22, 23 years old, hanging out with those yeah. dudes, and they're putting back liquor all day long. Yeah, liquor. I don't know where. <laughs> I got to meet all those guys. I met Steve Earle. I met uh, Alex Van Zandt and Guy Clark. Yeah, and and Steve Earle did covers of all those guys. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Good one, Jason. Towns Van Zandt's a good start, man. I like that. Okay, yeah. Rob, you go next. Where all right. Go? I mean, obviously, I gotta. I gotta start with what started this whole discussion last week. Um, I admittedly have not, I've been lazy, I guess. I've not, I've never been a Springsteen fan. Mm. Um, and, uh, just, you know, not that I didn't like it. It just, I, I was never drawn to it and I never bothered to sort of put forth the effort, shall we say. And then about a month ago, I was in one of my favorite record stores, um, and they were playing Nebraska, but I didn't know what the hell it was. And I had to be like, hey, Siri, what's this song? Because I didn't want to be the idiot that went up to the guy and went, uh, hey, what are you playing? You know, because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. Instead, I'm going to sound like an idiot in front of 46 people that are watching. But 12, um, 26. 26, whatever. <laughs> so I was blown away by Nebraska. I actually stayed in the store till the album was finished. Um, wow. I still don't have a copy yet, but actually 
I've, one of my viewers reached out the other day and said, I'm going to send it to you, which I Oh, wow. Was That's really nice. Awfully, awfully nice of them. Um, but anyway, so the wife and I were um, uh, shopping at a, you know, one of the antique kind of markets. And I mentioned this last week. I picked up Darkness on the Edge of Town because it was, it was like five bucks. And it's in really good shape. And I'm like, I'm going to start there. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And I've had Born in the USA forever. I've maybe listened to it once, so I got to listen to that. I have uh, just before the stream tonight, I listened to Born to Run. And I thought it was great. Oh, yeah. And when I, did those, uh, when I did those conversations with oh. my pal Bob, he suggested I have to have the river. So I found yeah. a cheap version of the river. So I know they're kind of all around in the same period. And, I, and I'm, I'm guessing that that is probably the place to start. But suffice to say, I'm, I'm sort of two for two on the two albums that I've, I've picked up before. And um, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. You know, I've, I've always heard some of his, his, his later stuff. And I always thought, yeah, his voice doesn't really appeal to me. You know, it sounds like he's trying to, he's constipated and trying to take a shit um nowadays but maybe that's just some shitty live videos that i saw it, literally i'm completely ignorant so i really 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 enjoyed the couple albums that i've dug into so far you guys have any other suggestions well, I, think, I was gonna say we could turn back the clock to one of my first times joining you all as just a, a viewer um we did like the pick like the 10 highest selling artists and like pick your favorite album or like we did the draft or whatever um and, and mine's the one that comes before Born to Run, uh, Wild the Innocent, the Street Shuffle. That's that's my favorite. Um, yeah. And it's not because it's any, I mean, very similar musically to Darkness. Those I first mean, two yeah. are a bit different, though. Wild the E Street. What was the other one? Oh, uh, Greetings from Asbury Park. Yeah, those Asbury two Park, are a bit yeah. different because they're really, I mean, he's a wordy guy, but those they're, ones are really they're wordy. They're like, he, can, he can get 40 words in a line you know well that's like, like when he was writing you know blonde about the light i mean you know how many words yeah, are in that song. Yeah, yeah. yeah the reason i like the reason i like well i do like those couple so much is because my favorite springsteens are like it, it's like the same as my favorite band morrison songs it's like the long like the ongoing and like he could write an epic and they were great composers and so like my favorite springsteen song of all time is jungle land yeah and, me too. um like but uh, Wild the Innocent Easter Shuffle has three like epic songs that are set eight minutes long each. Uh, Rosalie to come out tonight is just wow. one, just an absolute banger, right? Um, oh. and so many of those others. So I, I love that record a lot, but, but it's yeah. right in that same same area. Right? The best version of Rosalita that you can find online right now is the one that he did like at the Hard Rock um, Hotel, like in 2008 or nine. The audience is just eating it up, and I mean. Stevie Van Zant is killing it. Clarence was still with him at that point. Um, and it, just like that, that whole, you know, Papa says, you know, that you don't have, it's, don't just, really it's so good. Yeah. So good. It's like, it's like 80,000 people like doing the clap and everything, you know, wow. it's awesome. That's awesome. But, but the Rob, record company, Rosie just gave me a big advance. A big advance. Yeah. The, um, I mean, I know, I know Glenn has kind of been different on, on some of his later stuff, but for me, for the big production stuff, that album, Western Stars, I mean, I talk about it all the time. Came out like in 2020, 2021. It's very, uh, it's very 70s California. It's very like, again, like it's got that Glenn Campbell orchestration. Okay. Big strings. Um, and Springsteen's voice is fantastic. And he talks about, he did a, a um, he did an interview or something where he was, he was afraid of like how to sing on some of those later albums. And he's like, I listen back. He's like, he's like, that's pretty good for a guy that's 70 years old. And that's Springsteen saying, and Springsteen talks about it in his book that he hates his voice. Well, he did for the longest time. And it took him years to finally, you know, convince himself, Hey, I've got a pretty good rock and roll voice, but he hated his voice. That but, book was amazing. That book opened me up a lot more to that guy. Cause I was like, shit, he's smart. He can write. He's oh, like, yeah, he's, yeah. He wasn't he, just like this, you know, fight for the blue collar guy he's actually he's a shy guy you watch him in interviews and he's very kind of awkward almost in interviews but he gets on stage you know and he's you near know, screaming and counting off you know the one two three four you know yeah western stars yeah i remember uh brandon there mr hall of fame that's his he, favorite uh, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. He spoke so highly of that that I had to go out and I didn't buy it, but I listened to it quite a bit. I it's probably gonna be bought at some point. But I think it's a beautiful I, record. I, I still haven't found a good copy of the river and I see it everywhere, but it's never in decent shape. Like it's it's pretty rough every time I see it, but it seems to be everywhere. My best friend raves about yeah, how like good the ball is. My best friend raves about how good Wrecking Ball is. Any good? I like Wrecking Ball a lot. It's got so that album. Yeah, it has it's some um, that has some like punky elements to it, and and because like, that's little, like what mid twenty ten something like that. It's right twenty ten. Yeah, 2010. um, that's got that's got Wrecking Ball. That has um, uh, we take care of our own is on there. Um, American Land is an awesome song that because a lot of that stuff was recorded or written when he he did like a, an album called the Pete Seeger Sessions or the Seeger Sessions. Oh, where he covered yeah. a bunch of old folk songs, and a lot of them have like that kind of like that Irish Appalachian sound to it, and so some of that trickles over to Wrecking Ball, and that song American Land, it sounds like it could be like a again like a Clash, you know, Pogues kind of song. Just it's got pipes yeah. in it, and it's very very good. I like it. There's a, there's a couple of songs on that album that I think one song kind of has like a little bit of hip hop on it. Like one one track has like a female singer, and then Tom Morello is on a track or two from Rage Against the Machine. Um, so they're a little bit more industrial, but it's got some solid punky, you know, Celtic kind of sounds to it. And some of that Heartland, you know, Bruce Springsteen stuff, too. Well, and the and the, the the Rising was huge, too, when that came out. And that, and that basically, I mean, that was That's what? Pretty solid album, too. Four, four or five. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the song. That's kind of all album, inspired by the 9-11 thing, right? Yeah. I mean, that was like just an American sort of anthem for, mm -hmm. for so long. I love that song. His yeah, voice in that song. Fun. It's one of his better later songs, if you want to consider that later. As I was as I was sitting listening to these the other day, um, this kind of uh, slightly on a tangent, but I'm like that early Springsteen stuff sounds a hell of a lot like John Cafferty, who was the guy that did the soundtrack for. Well, they they made John Cafferty sound like Springsteen. Yes. Well, I, exactly, yeah. and they I did. just yeah. I love Eddie and the Cruisers. It's a great movie. Exactly, which is kind of all that well, same and, thing. And I and read about it. Like they hired him because he's kind of like the the low budget Springsteen. And I'm like, yeah, I, I totally get that. And and the other guy is uh, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, right? Who were around when Springsteen was getting started. Which a lot of those guys, a lot of the East Street band were in that group. Yeah, and they were kind of they were about the same time, and they're still yeah. around. Southside yeah. Johnny. I remember growing up on the dark side. Everybody just assumed it was Bruce Springsteen. Bruce, right? yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. But the thing is. I, I could talk about Bruce all the time, but I, I think the huge thing with Bruce though is like, obviously he's great, an amazing songwriter, like an American hero, all that stuff. His <laughs> band has just always been so damn good. I mean, oh, just they're amazing, incredible, and I mean that's, I mean just yeah, uh, they're obviously tight. like they're so tight. Oh god, yeah, yeah. I mean, he started out wanting it to be a soul review. That's what that's what his his envision was. That's what when you see him live, he was. It almost seems like a a gospely type thing. Like he, you yeah. know, it's. It's crazy. We better move on from Bruce, or we're never going to get anybody yeah. else in. Uh -huh. Rob, That's what's your important one's yeah. done? So, you know, good for you, buddy. That's Did your sub count one. rise with that? Uh, well, let's one. just um, hold on a second. Let me catch up here. So, some people are saying uh, Roy's Love Born to Run when it was first released. Check out Springsteen. Yeah, that live seventy five eighty five box set's great. Uh, Springsteen when that album came out. Man, that was the most sought after record. Everybody was just dying for that thing to come out because uh, there was no live Bruce stuff out in the market. Western Stars is is yeah, I, I, it's a good album, but I don't listen to it. But live version of Rosalita, yeah, any live version of Rosalita is good. Oh, look who's this it. beautiful woman popped in? Oh, there she is. Wow. Springsteen, wow. Rob, one of my yeah. faves. I've seen him a few times with the grumpy old man. <laughs> Sorry about your luck, Lynn. I wonder why she didn't take me. <laughs> hey, Lynn. His conversations with the bomb are interesting. Yeah, they like the mini podcast. Or Chris Isaac albums. Are from, yeah, Chris Isaac's mm. another good one. Same with Jim Morrison. Jimmy Hendrix both were shy and hated their vocals when they started. Well, John Lennon, too. Another guy who didn't like his vocals. Okay, Sam. All right, I've, I've written a bunch down, and all of these artists, I mean, I know obviously a little bit about. Um, one guy, oh, well, no, I'll go, I'll go with this. So one band that I really feel like I should be a diehard fan of that I'm not. I mean, I have a couple of their albums. I've done one of their albums with uh, Rich Strickler on our album ranking series, 
And that is the group REM. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I have, you know, automatic for the people I have, um, uh, was it time? No, what's it, what's it called? Out of time. Time out of, uh, time out, yeah, out of time. Yeah. Out of time. Time out of mine's Dylan. Um, and then I have a couple of what, a couple other nineties albums, but I don't reach for them. And I don't know why, because again, obviously REM, they're pulling from guys. I mean, obviously like the Beatles, but mostly like people like the birds and petty, um, but the, all that early stuff, that jangly stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'm sent an REM song from time to time. Like I remember when I first heard the song, don't go back to Rockville. I was like, Oh, it's such a great song. It's an early, early REM song. And then, um, um, driver eight, I, I heard that song. I was like, man, that's a killer song. And then, you know, Jason Isbell covered Driver 8 on his Georgia album. Um, but I don't reach for R.E.M. And I don't know why I don't reach for R.E.M. Um, I know that some of those, you know, early 2000s albums were were pretty maligned because they were slow and kind of dirty. They were like, you know, hour, 20 minute albums, like a lot of those albums in the 90s and 2000s. But are I, I want to like R.E.M. more than I do. I really do. And I don't know. I mean, the song Night Swimming, I think, is a masterpiece. I mean, John Paul Jones with the production on that and the strings, it's fantastic. Um, My favorite is uh, Document. So, um. See, like, I, I, I hear about Document. I hear about Green, you know, um, Murmur, I mean, all that stuff. But I don't reach for them. Like, even, like, in UCD bins or whatever, like, I'm not like, ooh, yeah. R.E.M., I need to get this. I need to get this. And I feel like I should because they are, they're jangly. They play yeah, the rhythm you should backer. Be, that should be in your wheelhouse for sure. It should be. And I, again, I, I have a small little you know stack of REM CDs, four or five maybe, um, but I don't reach for them. And I, I, again, I really, really need to. Um, so, you know. I wanted to mention something to Rob before we got started on this. And uh, where the hell did they go? Frick. Oh, here. So Toronto band that I know Rob loves, and I found one of their CDs in a, at a thrift store a few weeks ago and showed Rob that, but I found two more yesterday. The Sadies. Love it. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, It is a great one, Sam, because as soon as you mentioned bands you should get into, you should oh, check yeah. out the Sadies, man. This I have a called New Seasons. It sounds just like the door or from or the birds from 1965, pretty much. They're like cosmic cowboys is the best way to yeah. describe it. What's what's the name of that record, Glenn? New Seasons. You'll love these guys. I have a, I have a Sadie's CD. I think Birds, uh, Tom Petty, kind of a you know. I think uh, JT from JT's Record Room sent me a Sadie's album. And I also found this one, Rob, the in concert one. That one's phenomenal. It is good. My buddy Bob's on All that. The guest artist. Bob's on that one. Oh, is he? Yep. Yeah, these guys are amazing. Yeah, that that live that. album is is I, I that that in concert volume one is very much like their version of the last waltz basically. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. phenomenal. I'll write it down too. Wow. Okay, uh, Alex, you're now you're up. Uh, all right. So yeah, for for my list, it's kind of a combination of <clears throat> so, so basically none of my artists I have anything in of in my collection at all. Artists that I've either been like on the periphery, kind of interested in, uh, but just never really found something of or, or whatever. Um, or artists that there's some reason that I'm like kind of against them, but like I'm open to re exploring that. Um, so I'll start with, my <laughs> start with my first one because I think somebody, at least one person, maybe two people are going to feel a certain type of way about this. But that's a good thing. I'm not, you know, like I'm interested. I just, for the sake of the, uh, the stream, I guess when I was in high school, junior high, something, there was a song that played every freaking day by every freaking person, and I freaking hated it. I thought it was the worst song I'd ever heard in my life, and it got played on every TV show and in every crappy party with some jerk with an acoustic guitar, whatever it was. And the, the story I love hearing is when... Uh, do y'all remember the game Rock Band? It was like a Guitar Hero Rock Band thing. And they came out with Beatles Rock Band. And they're like, a whole, like four kids like sit in a room and like play pretend instruments and pretend they're the Beatles. And they're like, I thought that was just called Oasis. And so the band, <laughs> oh, the, 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 the band is Oasis. I look, I know, like. <laughs> 
I think I know, Sam, like the, the Sam, you and I, you and I like, should I know, unfollow like, Alex 90s, right now. I need it. Like, what a backhanded <laughs> slap right in the back of the head. Oh. I just, Alex, so you just lost only... Sam and I as subscribers. Oh, that's hilarious. But again, I'm like, it, it, and oh. literally, it, it is all because of Wonderwall. I mean, I would say that 100% because, like, I always loved like Champagne Supernova. I thought that's a great song. Right? Grab the you guitar, Sam. About, like, they're big hits, course. right? Um, but yeah, I mean, again, so I don't have like, what's the story, of Morning Glory? Like, and I know Rob, like you especially. You want to go first, that. Sam, or should I? Uh, I'll go because you're. I mean, you you grew up with the Oasis, like that. That's yeah. your that, that that's your youth, Rob. Um, yeah, yeah, you go first. So for me, I don't own a lot of Oasis records i mean small cds um but what when i started getting i mean obviously what's this one morning glory i i mean i devoured that thing when i first heard it i mean i first heard champagne supernova and i was blown away but then uh, on on guitar hero to, to, they had the song some might say on it and that's the mm -hmm. first time i ever heard the song some might say also from that album and i was like because it's got like that great like that down 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 and then it's just like bow now it's just killer guitars um she's electric it's on that album it's jangly but then you listen to other songs like from the other albums like cigarettes and alcohol or hello or rock and roll star that stuff is just like it's just killer 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 stuff and, and you listen to some of those listen to any of like the last three liam gallagher live albums that he's put out where he's doing the oasis stuff that stuff is gritty his voice is more mature now that he's in his early 50s they, they, I mean, every time I listen to any kind of like that classic era Oasis or those Liam Gallagher records, I'm like, man, that is, that's, that's my kind of like rock and roll. And it's not, don't say, oh, it's because they've got, you know, banjos in them. No, they don't have banjos in them. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. Um, but no, I mean, I, yeah, Wonderwall, it's kind of like, it's kind of like judging, it's kind of like, Judging like I don't know the the Beatles on, just on Hey Jude or Yellow Submarine like people that's like oh the Beatles they did Yellow Submarine like yes so like did, yeah. do you know more than like you know I mean I understand that because like I mean I judge bands that I consider like one hit wonders based on the hit I mean for years it was like you know Stacy's mom was it for Fountains of Wayne like why do I listen to that yeah. but I love Fountains of Wayne now and Stacy's mom like it's a good song it's, it's still fun but I'm like good example yeah yeah so anyway Rob you can clean it up so. You know, everyone sort of kind of agrees that, you know, when you hit about 14 years old, that that's that's kind of when music gets you. And so I was about I was maybe 15 when Oasis hit. So like that's 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 my band. Other than the Beatles, that's 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 my band. Uh, I love them. I own everything that Oasis put out. I own everything that both of the Gallagher brothers have put out. And I absolutely agree with what alex is saying about wonderwall i like wonderwall but i understand why people go oh fuck it's wonderwall massively overplayed of all of the songs that are on what's the story morning glory it is unquestionably the simplest song on the album it's a three chord wonder it's you know whatever there's not there's not much to that song I might even go so far as say it's probably the worst song on the album, but it's very radio friendly. Something like Champagne Supernova is absolutely incredible. Um, what the title track? What's the story? Of Morning. Don't look War? back in anger. Don't look back in anger is probably my favorite Oasis. Poetry song. on plastics here. Um, shit, sorry, but That's um, a big deal. Is it? Yes. Can I finish talking about Oasis? Can you guys shut up till I'm done? It's very important. We have a misguided individual here. We got a superstar in the house. Who cares? Put the comments away. We're talking about how Alex is wrong about something. <laughs> so put the put the comments away, Glenn. Put them down. Make us big again. There we go. So if <laughs> if if the 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 taintedness of Wonderwall kind of puts you off, don't start with that album. Start with definitely maybe their first album. I actually like it better than What's a Story Morning Glory. The other way you could go is they put out a, an album called The Master Plan, which is actually their fourth release. It's kind of like a singles and B-sides compilation. It is absolutely outstanding. So go with Be Here Now and go with uh, The Master Plan. 
Stay away from the shit at the end. Heathen chemistry, eh. Dig out your soul, dumpster fire. Um, standing on the shoulder of giants, eh, whatever. But uh, the first three or four, really, really good. And the second to last one, which is called Don't Believe the Truth, very good. But start definitely maybe or the master plan. Just there, just put aside that, that Wonderwall exists because it's really yeah. not that great of a song. I really well, like I get it, right. Like, I think all of us have that band. You know, it's like Rob, you and I talk about all the time. Like, that's their pour some sugar on me, right? Like, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it, it blew them up and a bazillion people love it, but we're tired of hearing about it. And, you know, right. and so, For yeah, me, and again, I'm to the radio. I, I like, I, I don't ever get tired of songs because I never listen to the radio, but so I like Wonderwall and I love Ryan Adams' version of Wonderwall. You ever heard that? The acoustic slow version of it it's he, cool. he so covered I, the he covered the entire what's the story morning glory album oh did he he did the whole thing the just like he did taylor's 1989 but there's i'll send you i'll send you an email privately alex there's some really good deep cuts like stuff like uh half a world away oh. just an incredible the importance Samuel, of being I idle. Just knows what i'm saying the importance of oh. being idle is one of my favorites yes. yeah. and i think also you know from my perspective you know take the uh we'll take like the the fan hat off and put on like the collector hat. I know a lot of people probably don't like doing that, but you know, it's like, I, I do look at my collection as a collection, as a library. I know like Mazzy uses that term all the time. Right. And so even if there are certain genres, cause I think this genre specifically are, is kind of, I'm just not really a fan of that kind of stuff, but it's like, that's one of the biggest albums of all time, especially one of the biggest albums of the nineties. Like, you know, I can pick up what a reissue of it for 25 bucks. Like, it's probably something that's worth having and, and then doing the exploring and doing the listening. And I feel like I'm going to, you know, like, and that's kind of what I'm getting at with, uh, with this episode or whatever too, is like, yeah, there's probably some albums I'm just adding to my collection after this um, that I need to. Well, uh, I'll, I'll leave me. I'll, I'll put some fun in this. I'll give you some songs to start with. And then it's going to, it's going to knock the ass tea right out of your hands. <laughs> you got to try harder than that. And your drink. This might have to be a three-hour video tonight. We're uh, we're we're one hour no, in. Glenn, the, the after party stream round. <laughs> the after party stream is already scheduled. This might be a two-parter. Um, I'm going to make Roy, our friend Roy happy because he's been bugging my rear end to listen to this band <laughs> since the first time he we ever met on uh, videos here. Family, Roy. I'm going to check out family. I come promise. on, Glenn. So um, I just completely ignored this band and i'm aware that rick gretch who was in blind faith was in fan came from family john wetton who i'm a big fan of who was a vocalist with king crimson for a while he was in there for a while they've got i i understand they've got seven albums out there around from 66 to 73 in different configurations and music in a doll doll's house and family entertainment were their first two albums i'm going to check those out so that's my first one. And Roy, if you want to chime in on that. And, and, but, and oh. I would add, Glenn, too, from, I, I have all the family stuff. Um, I think it's anyway. Uh, I, would, I would, fearless, I would add there. Um, music in a Doll's House is my favorite, but it's a little outside of what they would become. It's, it's pretty, like, artsy, but fearless. Where should I start? Yeah, I think you should, could still start there, but I, Fearless and Bandstand, I, I think, are really great. Okay, places to start. I'm writing it down. Awesome. Okay, we can start up again here. Let me go. See, Roy got all excited. Family. <laughs> he, he's speechless. He just stopped it. <laughs> 992. Oh, he's gained one. Come on, people. Eight more to go. Great Charles Manson rocks. Oh, that yeah, wrong family. Hooray! <laughs> hey, Jack. hey Jack. Hey Jack. Glenn, what's your favorite Vanilla Fudge album? Um, the one with uh, you keep me hanging on on it. Isn't oh, that, that debut? That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all. I think it's all covered. Well, it's mostly. Yeah. Covered, they do so a Beatles good. track on there, and uh, they do. The, yeah. Back to, um, back to Jason. Oh, shoot. I wasn't ready. Okay. Let me get I wasn't my list ready. <laughs> You've All only right, had an list. hour to prepare okay, for your second with, one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll give you a few more minutes. 
No, I, I got my list here. Okay, this is uh, this is kind of multifaceted, and I kind of alluded to it last week, um, but I haven't listened to anything by them or the predecessors, which I kind of want to learn all about this whole family of artists. And what I wrote down is Wilco. Wilco. Yeah. Because you guys were talking about, is it Spark? Is that, what is it, Sparks or something like that that led into it? There's two different groups that kind of... Sunvolt. Uh, Sun Sunvolt. Sunvolt and Uncle, Uncle Tupelo. Tupelo yeah. was the first band that yes. they were all in together. Sunvolt and Wilco. Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, so how did, so where does a guy begin with that whole... I already told you as part of our virtual album exchange, start with Willie, Billy Bragg and Wilco, Mermaid Avenue. I guess I do have some exposure to it then, because I do like that a lot, actually. Oh, good. But, listen to okay, it? so good. aside from that, well, and where do you, where do you jump into the what is it? pool? I always mess oh. with the word, but was it Yankee Hotel Foxtrot? I mean, that's kind of yeah. like their... That's their big album. That's, that's their, their big album, like... I was also told that that's not an easy entry. For it's no. not. I would no. recommend... Well, for me, because for me, you know what kind of music I like, I'm not a Wilco fan. I'm not. I have a ton of respect for Jeff Tweedy. Um, but for me, my entry level to them when I was like, Ooh, maybe I can get into them was their first album AM, um, which is like, it's, it's, it's like uncle Tupelo, you know, part two, I mean, it, it's the same kind of stuff. Um, so what's, what's the best uncle Tupelo album to, to go? With? And I, only know, I only know the one, but that's the one I showed the other week. That's the one that I know is Anna Diner. Either Anna Diner, no depression. They only had no three depression. albums. The two of them are really good. Both of them. Anna Diner, no depression. And or die, and 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 and, and and dine. How do you spell that? A n o d y n d y n e. I think something like that. A n o d y n e. Some of these six albums we're telling you about, Jason. God, yeah. I'd, I'd get those yeah. albums and I'd move on, and I when I would to the first Wilco album, oh, which okay. is uh, A M, is A M, and then I would move on to Sunvolt because Sunvolt's much freaking mm -hmm. better. I don't know this if some made a bad album in my no opinion. No depression. Okay, got it. So with Wilco, right, they start very sort of alt-country, like Uncle Tupelo, and then they go a little more, they, they drift to the little more abstract and experimental. Like, That's like not indie quite pop. right. Yeah. Indie pop kind of. I'm an early Wilco fan up to about 2000. And why you know, did they like, become why, like Sam? Why don't you like them? And why, in your opinion, do they do people not like them? Because my my impression, like a very ignorant one, mm -hmm. like just like on the periphery of you know being a music fan, people really threw a lot of critical acclaim at this band as being a great band, and like everyone needs to like them, everyone has to respect them. So why don't people? They have a huge. They obviously have like a huge influence. I mean, like in terms of like, I mean, they pull from so many great artists that you know are well respected, like you know, the uh, the band or the Birds or you know Tom Petty or whatever. But they start veering. They started veering off very quickly. Like it was a quick. Uh, and again, I know very little about Wilco, but from my experience, it was a very quick, you know, switch between an album like AM and then Yankee Foxtrot, because well, being here, being there was in the middle. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, just like that, that yeah. from that album to that album, it's that different. was like three to four years, it, a pretty it short quick. period of time. And, yeah, and they fell into that trap, like a lot of them in the, in the '90s, early 2000s. They're long records, yeah. and it's a lot. A lot of it is middle of the road, and not middle of the road, like mid tempo stuff. Like it's, it's not like you get like you know two heavy rockers, a ballad. Yeah, there's not a lot of energy in some of it. No, there's not, and and, and Tweety's voice. Actually, somebody one time said that I sounded like Tweety, which I was like, I don't know about uh, that. I know. But mm. Tweety, Tweety, his voice is kind of like, he kind of like has a catch in his voice that kind of goes up and down that can probably yeah. wear on you after a, a bit. You know, J Jason, it's funny. I, I'm finding myself in the same sort of category as you where I, I, I'm talk I need to do more and, and explore more and more and more. I have one Wilco record, and it's one that came out, I guess, last year, the year before, Cruel Country. I love that. Like I, but you know what? But you know what, Sam? That's my opinion. So I love it. You might hate it. That's good for you. I'm sorry, but I, it's funny. Like, but but that's like, I don't have anything else. But like, I streamed that, and I was like, I freaking love this, and so I bought it. But I don't have anything else. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's a lot of homework for that. I, I really want to hear this Uncle Tupelo. I think you need Wilco to go actually, Sunday but... first. If I... you really, Jason, if you really want to learn about Wilco, I could put you in touch with someone who knows a little bit about them. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Don't don't let this focus on Wilco. Go to Sunvolt. It's way better. I, I agree. Better. I, got, I wrote trade. it down. I wrote it down. It's awesome. Here. And Uncle um, Tupelo is even better than Sunvolt. Yeah, but I don't know. I like Sunvolt the best. My favorite Sunvolt album is a real like kind of a dark, dirgy kind of an album, but it's called American Central Dust. I love this freaking album. It's really good, but it's real moody and almost depressing. But it's really good. Kind of like me. I got, of, I got a ton of their albums. I have this great. great um, I think I got like six Wil uh, Sunvolt albums. I have this great Wilco concert bootleg digitally. They did this um, concert. I think it was called Wilco Solid Sound or something like that. It was a. They played two nights, and it was all requests, and they didn't prepare for anything. They would literally just spin a wheel and pick an artist and just play a song, or the audience would like shout out a song and they would play it just and they might even not know it and they just figured out as they played it it's brilliant that's cool so good okay uh rob you're up oh all right um i gotta go with one that i've i've just started to delve into uh but it's along the same topic so a band that i've never been into before but probably should because of their affiliation to the beatles is Electric Light Orchestra. Oh, yeah. And oh. I did that video uh, last month where Embryotic Robot and Stylus Meets Vinyl and I went record shopping in Toronto, and Chris from Stylus Meets Vinyl gifted me uh, a New World record and El Dorado. My El Dorado's the That's best. Two of the best ones. <laughs> so I'm starting that at the same time because I know nothing of Electric Light Orchestra. I know Jeff Lynn from... Traveling Wilburys, yep. but beyond that, never listened to him before. Wow. I know he's, you know, George's best friend. I've seen him at, you know, like the concert for George, you know, that kind of stuff, but never dug into any ELO before. Yes, I know the hits, but that's that's kind of it. So um, Chris gave me these, and I've had a ton of stuff to listen to in the last three weeks, but a new world record, really good. I like it. I have not spun El Dorado yet, but that's probably on the docket for maybe tomorrow when I get a lot of work. That's my favorite by a mile. Uh, the other albums are good, but that one for me is really special. I don't know. When I noticed when when Steve from All the Worlds of Stage did his vinyl tag, he said that was a goddamn good record as well. So yeah. looking forward to it. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you're in like that's sweet. Well, the sweet spot, you know, between El Dorado, which it's funny because. I mean, their first two, my guess is that you probably wouldn't like. I mean, their first two are really kind of progressive, a little bit psychedelic. Like, it's still Jeff Lim coming from, like, his move period. It's got Roy Wood. It's just very, like, yeah. Um, but, like, the period that you're talking about, like, I mean, it's just great, like, orchestral Baroque pop stuff. I mean, the hooks are out of control. Yeah. Um, obviously, probably, like, the, you know, um, Out of the Blue is a classic. Uh, you would love that. And then... Um, yeah, out of the blues, great. But too. Fear the Fear the Music, I think, is the other one that's okay. kind of planted in 74, 75. But the the two that you got are arguably their two best. I mean, I All love right. those two the most. Cool. Looking forward to it. Sam. All right. One, um, I wanted to to kind of touch on some of uh you know the songwriter aspect of me. And again, this is one that I always kind of joke with uh, Brian about from Embryonic Robot. Um because he always men he mentions a couple people in every, almost every video. One of them is Morrissey and the Smiths, and the other one is Leonard Cohen. Uh, mm -hmm. Cohen, obviously, you know, a little bit a little bit older than than you know guys like Dylan. You know, he was born in the, in the late thirties, um, and a lot of those guys respected Cohen. Um, and I know, I mean, we have three three Canadians on here. I saw the I saw the Cohen documentary that came out a couple of years ago. Hallelujah which was really good because, again, I'm not a crazy fan of that song, Hallelujah, and I know that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like, oh, I don't... We'll talk about a song that got overplayed or by or overcovered, whatever. It was yeah. overcovered, yeah, like, especially like when, like, stuff like American Idol came out, like, every other, you know, person was covering that song, but, I mean, I knew that. I know, like, you know, Suzanne, um, but other than that, like, I have not even tried to delve more because, like, 
you know, he's, he's kind of hits me in a way that, I mean, you have like somebody like Lou Reed who I can't stand. I, I, I can't stand Lou Reed um, mm-hmm. at all. Um, I, I'll stop there, but Cohen has that same kind of, a lot of that same kind of style with his singing, which isn't really singing. Um, but he's uh, me. I think. I mean, Cohen. I think is a lot more talented than 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 um, Lou Reed because of his uh, poetry. Yeah. He was a poet yeah. first, and then I know 14, like thousand miles. People people were saying to Cohen like they're like, hey, you should put you should hold a guitar with your poetry and like play your poetry through song. Yeah. He's like, I'm not a singer, and like, oh, you should do. It. I think it was somebody like I think it was like Judy Collins. Judy or Collins was a big big. Yeah. yeah, so I don't. I don't know. She covered his songs first and encouraged them to get up and play. I so like. I don't know. I don't know what to do with Cohen. If I if I even should. I mean, because I, um, I would do with something a little more musical, like "I'm Your Man," which is not that, which is a little later. But the first three albums, like uh, the self-titled Leonard Cohen album, then "Songs for from a Room," and "Songs of Love and Hate," are all freaking fantastic. As far songs as songs of love and hate, I know so, that one. I, I was Sam a month ago. I'm a Canadian and I, I recognize that Leonard Cohen is a national treasure up here, but I never got into him and didn't really, you know, just exact, exactly what Sam is saying. And uh, again, when I was out with Chris and Brian record shopping in Toronto, um, I know that Brian from Embryonic Robot is a huge Leonard Cohen fan. And there's one song I absolutely love called Closing Time. Yeah. It's from the mid 90s. And that's on the album, The Future. And yeah. I, they had this at the store, and I said, Brian, I want to get into Leonard Cohen, and I love Closing Time. Is this a good place to start? He said, absolutely. And I can tell you, Sam, as someone who has never heard a Leonard Cohen record, this is fantastic. Yeah, that'd be a good one, too. I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Okay. I'm Your Man, The Future. They're kind of the same type of albums. Fantastic. So good. Awesome. Um, did you see this, Joel? Just subscribe to Rob's channel. Oh, let's see where are we at. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. I'm at nine ninety two. Eight more to go. Uh, I got to go back and do a couple of things. Uh, here, Glenn. What's your favorite? Well, we already did that. Uh, you better put Zach's comment up there. Uh, did I miss it? Yeah, it's uh, up when you have my respect, Doll's House was going to be the name of the Beatles' white album, but family refers to it. All right, I knew I'd, I knew I'd be sucking up to Roy. <laughs> okay, I'm writing that down. Uh, Joel just subscribed. There's Zach's comment. I'm here for the Kid, kid Rock content. See, now we need yeah, Alex. On, we need Alex on the screen here for this to be funny. Alex, get your ass back here. I did. Did you your see brother? that? Did you see that? You see what your brother's here for? And you know what I got? And see now we got to say, Sam, where are you headed? I was oh, going to say, uh, Rob, but he says you're the only one with Kid Rock content. I'll so. take that down. I don't even want that on my channel. <laughs> where are you headed, Sam? I can, I can smell, I can smell the, the, that's the scumbag. That's got scumbag written all over it. Where are you headed, Sam? Oh, gosh. Fearless is good. All the albums are great. Don't overlook <laughs> any of them. Yeah, Roy, see Roy. I got Roy all revved up now. <laughs> a lot of bands that blew up in the early 2010s had fantastic early albums, but when they were nobodies, prime example, Portugal, the man. I wrote it down there, Michael. Wilco can get boring. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Great. Wilco is very boring after a couple albums. If I you like the old probably stop around man, like five guys. I'm writing that down. Fast. Fast. I'm going to make a friggin' playlist. We should have, we should have wrote everyone's recommendations down. I am. We could have we could have made a playlist oh. and then shared the playlist with everybody. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, have you seen Rick Beatles? Be- yes, I watched it. Thanks to I think was it Rob? Or- yeah, I sent it to you. Yeah. It? yeah, it's it's an amazing interview. If you want to watch an interview with someone who's just a he, he, all of his interviews are the best. He, he's yeah. the best interviewer on YouTube, period. But Bale's musical mind is unbelievable. Even if you don't like banjos, just listen to the where he talks about creating music and stuff. It's a brilliant interview. Hey, Jack, we passed around our group chat. It was crazy, eh? 
Hey Jack, we passed that around our group chat. What what did we pass? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, oh sorry. God, that song. That's uh, oh, what perfect. is it called? The uh, Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Jason the Scorchers were a good cow punk band. Okay, do I am, am I caught up? No, maybe not. Uh, Family lead singer Rod Chapman had an extensive career after family worth, including his next band, Streetwalkers, and many solo albums. Chapman's first album is great, too. Sadly, I think El Dorado is ELO's worst record. Wow. I don't think ELO, I don't think anything that Jeff Lynn has ever put production on is bad. I don't think there's there's no such thing as a bad ELO record, in my opinion. Even the even the the proggy first two or even like the 80s stuff. I, I, I think it's all fairly consistent. And even when he did the album, what was it Zoom In? Um, or Zoom in like 2001 where ELO went on tour. The tour was canceled because of lack of tickets. That was just because they were out of their prime. Nobody wanted to hear that big production ELO stuff that was going around the 80s and 90s. Jeff Lynn can do no wrong in my opinion. Dang. You want it darker as Greg? I don't know. That's the one that was released posthumously and I didn't like it because talk about spoken word. The whole thing is like like at least he tried singing his Leonard Cohen way on the other albums. This album is like he's actually singing the way I'm talking right now. I, I, I <laughs> Marsha, you're very pedestrian. <laughs> That's Marsha calls herself that. I, I was. Mm. Charles recently released two live in retrospective albums. Roy, Roy, Roy is just on a freaking roll here with this family. I think we need Roy on here as a guest one. We, I think we do. I wish he. We don't even need to say questions. anything. He'll just talk for two hours. I would love to have Roy on. We could just ask him questions. Yeah. I saw Roy Leonard Cohen in '92 at Ring Festival in Germany. There is wow. your next podcast interview, Rob. Get I Roy made a on. promise I to Brian to dismiss a shot. Do that. I, I can't. Could... Can could do that interview with Roy and you could and you could have a whole series of interviews you could interview Glenn right after and your whole series would be talking to guys that have seen the best concerts in history yeah, that's not a bad idea yeah, kid the yes. douche we can definitely chance if you're still watching, I agree he is a douche yes best Portugal man album is their first I like that song feel it still that Portugal the man song I wrote Weird. those down Michael I'm excited. Later, you vultures. I'm not sure what that is. Is that an uh, album? He's uh, referring to the Portugal the Man albums. Oh, okay. Sucko and London and Terror. Wow, very cool. Lady Annabellum. It's great in bed. <laughs> Willie Will Stuck in a Paramount is excellent. Yeah, I don't get. I don't have to get Paramount. And have you ever rode a horse to a saloon? Um, <laughs> no, uh, I was more onto the dinosaur thing before cars came. Uh, before they invented the wheel. Thanks to the dance was posthumous. You want it darker. Oh, right. You want it darker was the one I don't like. But they yeah. recorded those like back to back and like in his bedroom. I know yeah. his son was the big producer on that. Okay. Uh, Sam just went, right? Yep. Alex. Uh, well, I obviously had to get the big reaction out of Rob for the first one. I'm thinking I might get a good reaction out of Sam and Glenn for this one. But, you know, this one, th there is no negative experience with it. There's no, like, oh, I was tired of hearing that song. I think for me, just, like, when I was getting into music and still for, like, the first however part of my, like, starting to, like, recollect and re-get back into stuff, I was always, like, a band guy, right? Like, I was, like, I want the band. I want the band. And so, like, Dylan came later. Like, singer-songwriters came a lot later just because I was always about, like, the band, the band, the band. Um, not the band, the band, but, you know. <laughs> um, and so a lot of those like old timey singer songwriter type of individuals, I'm just really late to, and then again, I get like overwhelmed, don't know where to start. And so my second pick that I'm going to go with, uh, is Leon Russell. I have never listened to anything. Leon Russell. I don't own anything. I have a general idea, um, about it. I'm a big fan that he was part of like the backing band with like Badfinger for like concert for Bangladesh. Love that. Um, Here's in the Wrecking Crew. Mad Dogs and Englishman. Yeah, like all that's yeah the the Wrecking Crew. Yeah, great point, Sam. Yeah. Uh, so I just um, you know I see his records out. They're usually not very no. expensive. Um, they're usually like really accessible. I just I have nothing, and I'm 
yeah, I'm, I'm like relatively clueless. Well, uh, the first one that with the blue cover just called Leon Russell, it's fantastic. And then Carney was kind of his big, big hit album that had tight rope on it. And that's, that's probably his biggest selling album. Mm -hmm. Both really good. And his, he ended up getting picked up on the dark horse label, George Harrison's label a few years ago. And they released an album called signature songs which is just Leon playing the piano and singing his songs. It's an absolutely beautiful record, like, but mm. it's really sparse. It's just piano and him. And I think it's an amazing record, but. And that's, a, I love that type of stuff. Yeah. You'd like check that one out. Yeah. Like not to make the comparison, but since this person came up earlier, like my favorite Nick cave, again, I'm not comparing Nick cave with Leon Russell, but like, I like idiot prayer where it's just him at a piano. Oh, or yeah, that's a great Hall. record. Like oh. I love that type of stuff, so yeah. I'm all in on that. That's a great album, Idiot Pearl. Yeah, wow. Okay, my turn. I'm going with a. So this guy, his guitar playing was an influence on the following people: Jimmy Page, Donovan, Neil Young, and Paul Simon. They all learned how to play acoustic guitar listening to this guy, John oh. Fahey. Or I mean, ah. sorry. Bert, not John Fahey, Bert Yanch. Oh, nice. Heard that name? I've never heard the one note that this guy's played, but I've heard his name for a hundred freaking years. And he's from Scotland, considered a folk musician, singer, songwriter, acoustic guitar player. 28 albums the guy has. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a huge influence. I saw Neil Young in 2014 at Massey Hall, and it was an all acoustic show. And I'd say, I bet you Neil mentioned Bert Yanch's name about six times during that concert, just saying, this influenced me on this song. This is a, so I'm, I'm really interested in checking that guy out. So if anybody knows anything about him, where to start. Um, I, I do not know a thing about him, but I, I guess YouTube, BC. Uh, oh, there you go. Jason's got it. Um. Uh, do you know, or have you ever, uh, Emma over at eight vinyl low? Yeah. Uh, amazing. She doesn't post as much as I think she used to, but she yeah, is great. like fully on her way to completing like her completest Bert Janch. Like really she's, she's reach up to her. into her. So yeah, I mean, I think she would love that. Be like, I don't even know where to start. Like, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll message her on Instagram actually. Yeah. yeah. So th this one, Tell here. Her I sent you. Oh, do you this have one? one? This is it, Jack O'Ryan. I found this and I picked it up because I knew about this guy from the Zeppelin influence and everything. And this one has the song. It's called Black Water Side, <laughs> but which is obviously like a, a massive, you know, influence. You could, I, I'm sure, some people argue that Zeppelin just ripped them off. But um, when he, they did uh, Black Mountain Side, right when Jimmy Page played okay. that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there's a lot of like. I think that's not even the only one. I think there's another song on this that's. There's something else on this that's a total, like, you'll recognize other people having done it. Anyway, great album. I picked that up. I saw it somewhere. It's, it's on Vanguard. So, it's, well, this has to be pretty good. You know, Vanguard being the, the Baez label and everything else. Yeah. And so, uh, I spin that a fair bit. I freaking Oh, wow. Awesome. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bert Yance was in Pentangle. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mazzy is the Bert Yance fan as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm going to check them out. And we're back to Jason. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go. It's only five of us, Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, got, I have like a list of like 14 of them here. Um, I don't know who I want to go with. I kind of like sticking with the singer-songwriter. You guys have already mentioned a few of these, um, not as your own, but... Uh, okay, let's just do Nick Cave. Nick Cave, where does a guy start? I know one album by Nick Cave, and I know that uh, there's a lot of great albums by Nick Cave. Where's the first place a guy starts with Nick Cave? And the well, Bad Seeds. It, it depends. Let's see what I get the Well, here's the thing. Nick Cave started as like a pretty like aggressive, loud, post-punk Yeah, and I don't so, like the screen yeah. Nick Cave. Which I don't right, like but, that. I don't like that Nick Cave yeah. stuff. I mean, the first one I bought, and this was much like so many people, I'm sure, on YouTube, right? Like, I heard Mazzy talking about Boatman's Call, 
and just yeah. how much so he loved it. To go there. I Great fell album. in love with Bowman's Call. Oh, like, I was, so. This is one of the most beautiful records I've ever heard. Not, number one place to start. Okay, done. Easy. Yeah. Nick Cave, Boatman's and, Call. And uh, if you just want something like uh, like Alex mentioned earlier, he just sat down with a piano and sang all his songs on an album called uh, Idiot, oh. Idiot Prayer, is that what it's called? Idiot yeah. Prayer, yeah. Beautiful record. Wasn't there one something about? Uh, and he's lost two kids. Two two of his sons have died. Yeah. Uh, and he did an album called Ghostine. Have you ever listened to that? Yeah, I've I've seen. What a beautiful freaking record that, that is! Album. Now it's kind of steamy, but it's very sad. But it's still a beautiful record. What's the one that's? Uh, it's about like is it killers or um, murder songs or something? Murder songs. Murder songs. Yeah. And if you watch the TV show Peaky Blinders on Netflix, yeah, yeah he does. So that, that yeah. that's where Nick Cave. That's when I first heard of Nick Cave because his song, uh, "Love uh, the Hand." What's the, yeah, Left I know hand, what you mean. Uh, whatever is that? Right, right. Yeah, the, that that's the title song from the show played every so, week. Yeah, and that, I, I that, and I loved that song, and I went, "Who is that?" And I that's what I found out about. Told me about one album, and I I ripped the album from you know napster or whatever the hell it is and i still have it upstairs somewhere but it was it was one of his more screaming albums so i kind of you know i listened to it yeah kind of ignored it and then i just never went back to him but the amount of love the guy gets you know for oh, what people a, whose opinions what, i respect i should probably give him another yeah. shot but yeah boatman's call alex is dead on yeah yep. okay it's uh rob okay um this is an album that was my dad's, and this is an artist that uh, I've heard mentioned in several vinyl tags in the last two days, and I really like this record, so I need to dig a little bit deeper into some John Mayle. Ooh. I love this when I was a kid, when, and I, I, when I did the video where I talked about records of my dad's that I owned... I talked about how when I was a teenager and I, you know, was into the Beatles and, you know, Creedence and that kind of thing. He goes, that's good, but I, I want you to expose you to some other stuff. And he would give me stuff like Santana and this was one and, and Howlin' Wolf. And this is one of the records that he gave me on CD as a, you know, 15 year old in the nineties, I was listening to this and I loved it, but that's the only mail I've ever done. So I need to, uh, I need to delve a little bit deeper into that because, you know, I love this. So just go in order because he played with like events. Like I mean, we got Peter Green, yeah, coming up, and we got uh, Mick Taylor coming up. I mean, just yeah, take the next one. Yeah, I think just that's go in order, I think man. That's kind of great, point. Well, he gets to a point where he gets kind of into a jazzy blues fusion kind of thing, which isn't the I'm same. Not into the jazz kind of thing. But, and, uh, yeah. and if you like like more rock and blues, like any of his '90s stuff, is just like. Coco Mon and anything you see with Coco Montoya on it, it's just okay. Really heavy freaking blues rock. It's great. Okay, and cool. I guess I referenced her earlier. Emma over at Eight Vinyl Low is a huge John Mayall fan. Yeah, so, yeah. She's Emma also on her full like completest thing of you know because these people got like a million records. Um, yeah, she loves the blues. Yeah, I've been on live chats where they're talking about Johnny Winter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, she yeah. loves that stuff. Sam, um, Sam's going. Oh, to get the, to Sam, oh. you're back. Never luck, boys. How come your hair looks different? Uh, the, the wig was. The the other, was coming are you on the other side now? Or? And before I go, I'm up <laughs> at 9.93 right now. So. Oh shit! It's happening. Tonight it's happening. It's happening. Come on, people. Yeah, this is great. Please, if anyone is. There we go. Please subscribe to Northern Revolutions. Tell your friends. Let's let's get let's do that. Friend. I feel like this is like a telethon for the needy or something. Yeah. <laughs> Won't you please, please help? Us? Man, Won't you please help the, us, poor kid? We need the money for the human fund. <laughs> we need to find a cure for whatever the hell he has. Please. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> the human fund. Oh, man. Money for people. <laughs> <laughs> The caution, the nails in the 25 yeah. G's, bust the cold. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a front of the bottom. Oh, God. Is it, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Sam. Go ahead. Oh, I'm up. Okay. And your hair looks great, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. I like the part on that side better. It's the same side, Glenn. I'm just teasing. 
Actually, I, well, anyway, never mind. Um, a group that I, again, um, down here, I mean, obviously, like, Southern Rock is, is big in my neck of the woods. Um, I, I, I will never say Skinnerd. I don't care about Skinnerd. Um, but a band that I really want to get into, I have their greatest hits, is the Almond Brothers. Um, because I love I love Greg Almond's voice. Um, I love Dickie Bet's sound. Um, I like chocolate covered almonds. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure everybody will say, you know, you know, eat a peach or you know, at the film or or whatever. But I, I just I don't know what to do with the almonds because again, like I know that they 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 run like that jammy uh, band kind of st- style, but they're not psychedelic necessarily, like the Grateful Dead. Um, or you know, trippy. Even like uh, like groups like Fish or even Zeppelin to a point kind of got jammy on some songs. But um, I want to like the Almond Brothers because everybody talks about them so much and they're so respected. With you know those early records with with Dwayne and then obviously with Dickie and 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 Greg and then even later with you know Derek Trucks and and Warren Haynes. But I I just I'm kind of at a loss. I mean, again, I know live at the Fillmore, but some of those songs scare me because they're like 20 minutes long. Yeah, so, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, I wouldn't start there, even though I did. But so um, I don't know. I would check out Greg Ullman's album that he did before he passed away called Southern Blood. It, there's a lot of guests on there, right? There's uh, no. Uh, the only guest on there is uh, Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown. So um, they do this song. So. Uh, it's covers. Well, it's covers. You know the song "Song for Adam" off of uh, yeah. that right before losing. They yeah. do that song, and Greg Ullman is is dying. He's he's thinking back about his brother and all this stuff, and he gets to the last line of the song, and he can't sing it. And oh. rather than them do, he gets choked up. And rather than uh, re-record the song, they left it that way. It's so fucking. Poignant. It's unbelievable. Yeah. What, a, what a beautiful album that is. It's really acoustic y and does the, it's really nice album. Greg Greg came around here. We have a big festival called Floyd Fest, which is like huge in like the festival world. Um, even like Rolling Stone covers Floyd Fest. Um, and Greg Allman was here like one, one of his last one of his last tours. Which record is that? Jason? I agree with uh Jason. I would do the first studio albums. Idle Wild South. Yeah. Would be might be a great starting point. This That's got uh, Midnight Rider on it, right? When I had yeah, it, yeah, because yeah, you're not going to get the, the extended jammy bits on the studio stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like the Dead. I mean, the, but the Dead, the Dead weren't known for their studios. But but you the stay dead. away from uh, Eat a Peach and uh, and Phil Maurice because they are they they have a long extended. I mean, they do Mountain Jam yeah. on Eat a Peach. It's like 30 minutes long. Yeah, so, I don't yeah. care about that. Yeah, you don't need no, that. Th- this so I would, uh, Jason's great at. Isle of Wild South and and Southern uh, Blood would be my two. Um, Sam, and, and the other thing too, Sam, is it, granted it's after Dwayne had passed, but mm. you know, Brothers and Sisters is, is I mean, that's the that's the Dickie Betts album. Of, yeah, another great. Like album. he he started he takes over the lead. That's got um, that Jessica. It's got Jessica. No, it's got uh, Ramble Man on um, on it, and like it is significant because. You know, if like you look at it, like Skinner really came from like the the country sort of side, right? Grateful Dead was super psychedelic. Almond Brothers really almost had like a jazzy. I mean, you listen to like yeah. In Memory of Elizabeth Reed. I mean, that's more of like almost like oh, yeah. a jazzy yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, but when they went Brothers and Sisters, which is you know, it's like oh my gosh, these people have died, and now it's just Dicky. What's he gonna do? And he just killed it. Um, but it doesn't have the long jammy stuff. It's very accessible, and it's just, I mean, super solid record. Yeah, that's a great, great, great place to go to, brothers and sisters, for sure. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget, Dwayne was like a session musician down in uh, Muscle Shoals, oh, yep. playing on Wilson Pickett records before, he, you know, when he got the idea of starting the Allman Brothers. So he had that soul kind of yeah. base to work from, too, so. On a tangent, I love Warren Haynes' side band. Yeah, Warren Haynes. Government Mule is fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Nick Cave walking casually through the crowd at Lollapalooza. Well, that's cool. Check out the band Gas from the early 70s. Peter Green played on a few tracks. In my backyard. Missed that place. Hello, Richard. Happy New Year, buddy. 
during Alan Holzer was the single greatest guitar player of all time. Wow, that's high praise. Any hoopty, Alex? You know, it, Wednesday is hoopty night. I'm going to change my name to Hoopty and Vinyl. <laughs> Found at the film for three dollars at the point. First film, but that's the wow. first film brothers album I heard too. Wow. Back when it came yeah. out. I'd buy almost any album for three bucks. <laughs> the albums were great. Yeah, they were. Sam, if you're not into the jammy part of the Allen Brothers, get the greatest hits. It'll do for no. That's that, what I have. It's not a hits band, Marsha. Bad advice. <laughs> that is not a hits band. They've only had one song on the radio. Well, I mean, it's got it's got Whippin' yeah. Post and Elizabeth Reed and yeah, you know. I, yeah. I, uh, I would go with Brothers and Sisters or Idlewild South or. You need one like to take their albums out of context on a hits album. To me, it's just. Brothers and sisters, definitely. Hello, Marsha. Marshall Tucker, yeah, great band. It's Jessica and Ramblin' Man, yeah. Long 20 minute on Brothers go by six minutes. I agree, I like the long jammy stuff, but Charlie's Daniels stuff was 70. I just mentioned Charlie Daniels in my top albums of the 74. Hey, Richard, Elizabeth Reed. Yeah, it was a name on a tombstone, that's right. Where It All Belongs is a uh, great older album, yeah. Hitting the note is another good one. Some of their older ones with Warren Hayes and and uh, um, Derek Drops, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, Alex. Is it me? Yes, it is. Uh, um, well, you know, it's funny now because some of these artists have gotten like mentioned, kind of like in passing, uh, and I'm like, oh, they're on my list. And other people in the comments are like. Fuck that artist. They should all go die. And you're like, oh, geez, I don't want to know if I want to mention them. But, uh, I, you know, both these artists kind of fall into like this post-punky sort of thing. I don't have a problem with either artist, and I'm going to take the personalities out of it. And I'm going to lump, I'm going to lump them in both into the same pick because I think there's some crossover. For, for the first part, one of my favorite songs of all time um, is... Uh, Wow, I'm sitting here and I was like, I can't even remember what my one of my favorite songs is of all time. Um, picture, picture, picture by Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow. And uh, I've always wanted. No, <laughs> where are you heading, Sam? Where are you heading? Oh, Sam? Sam? I don't show that anymore. That's like showing a MAGA hat to me. Like, just... <laughs> Glenn, you don't get the joke because you weren't you were away that way. I don't even want to joke about that guy. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> of course he is. Right of course well, he is. Disgusting pig. If, if you love if you love those, you'll love that. I hate so his cool. politics. I hate his personality. He's just a scumbag. Me too. My, I feel dirty just touching the record. But, let but. Alex talk. <laughs> well, this might be my, my first. This might be the first video video I edit. <laughs> one, <laughs> so of, I with that record. one of my favorite songs of all time. Like if you're like Alex, let's listen to your top ten favorite songs. This very well might make the list. Is the song "Just Like Heaven" by The Cure? Mm. And I got nothing by the cure. And just because we're all along the same lines of um, that type of music, I know there's probably people out there. I also have nothing by the Smiths. And I know the Smiths came up in the album exchange that Glenn, that you're doing with the group of people. I know Steve from all the worlds in, in the, all the worlds of stage was talking some trash about the Smiths. I'm sure marsha has got some comments about the Smiths and the cure, but you know, and a lot of that is because that kind of, I'll get to you in a second, Jason. Relax. <laughs> um, I, I'm like, put your damn hand down. I, <laughs> that's just Jason not a, uh, <laughs> That's a genre I'm very late to the game of. You know what I mean? Like, when, when you grow up and listen to shit like, you know, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin, it's hard to, like, convince yourself of, like, ooh, I also like The Cure. And so... But I was like, I have no reason not to. I know people I actually have the utmost respect for um, what's his face in the cure. We're not going to talk about Morrissey, but um, yeah, I mean, I love the singles. I mean, I think the singles are great. The things I've heard, even like the really cheesy ones, like pictures of you or whatever, I think it's just hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, I got nothing by the cure and nothing by the Smiths. And I know the Smiths discography is a lot smaller, but uh, yeah, this again, another one of those two bands. I just got nothing of. Jason, go ahead. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, I agree. The Cure almost made my list tonight, but I am so out of my depth with them, I couldn't even put them on my list. I can't 
even pretend to know anything about them. However, the Smiths, both Jeff Witcher and Arnaldo at uh, Fidelio's Frequency, both mm-hmm. did deep dives on the Smiths, which I've queued up and I haven't really watched all of them yet. But I almost put the Smiths and the Cure on my list. That's funny you brought those up. But those guys, if anyone's watching that wants to learn more about them, go to those guys' channels. They have amazing, uh, it looks like pretty in-depth videos on those yeah. two bands. That's I just a great thing. Rob, yes, you have yeah. huh? I just reviewed a Smith's album called Strange, with something Strange Ways. And uh, I didn't mind musically. I didn't mind them. But I, I have a really hard time with the vocals. I don't like Morrissey's voice whatsoever. Yeah. And I could totally see that. And yes, thank you, JWG Moore. Robert Smith. I couldn't think of his name. Um, Bobby Smith. Is the, yeah, but the uh, leader, singer of the, of the Cure. Yeah, and I can totally see that, Glenn, of just like not, you, you know, getting uh, the voice. I, I feel like, you know, and if there are people who are Smiths fans out there, like, again, I think their discography is fairly small where it's, it's like, yeah. when people are like, I've never gotten into the doors. Where do I start? And you're like, just pick yeah. one. You know, like, who cares? But like, um, I you know, I see, would like the Smiths when I was listening to it. I could see the value in the mm-hmm. music, but I just... I just, see the Queen is Queen is dead a lot as like top of people. Is that yeah. for the Smiths people out there? Meet is murder. Skip the last tracks. <laughs> just take it off the needle before you get to the last song uh, there, Marsha. But yeah, I just Marsha's small doses with the Cure. I've never heard a Cure song. I don't think. Yeah, you've heard you've heard of um, uh, Melt with You. Oh, That's modern right. English. I'm thinking yeah. of um, Friday I'm in Love. Friday I'm in love, but um, what's yeah, Friday I'm in love, or why can't I be you? That's a big hit. I can't think of any of those. I, those titles don't ring a bell you at all. You know them if you heard them. Thursday, okay. I'm on even start. It's oh, Friday, Friday. I'm, I'm in love. love. Remember, I don't listen to radio, so I don't know. Saturday, <laughs> all the Smith's albums are acclaimed. Robert Smith is the leader of the cure. Why wasn't he in the Smiths? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you've got me totally confused. Jack, Jack and I love favorite pictures song? of you is like, especially like the Jack album version. It's like a nine minute song with like the most over dramatic. You know, it's like, it's so over dramatic. But I, don't, I mean, well, that's the thing, right? Right? Like, to a certain extent, when you're talking about artistic expression, like, it's dramatization. These things, like, that's that's part of the game. So I'm all in on. I think Robert Smith is great. Uh, I got no issues with him. We sound nothing like the cure. Killing Joke or Lumped in Post Punk, one of my favorites. Do you consider the cure like the jam? Is that kind of similar? I don't know that I would. I I might be talking out of my ass, but I don't know if I would call the put the jam and them in the same boat. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, because even like the things like the Cure and the Smiths had in the post punk world had like a, a much darker sort of vibe to them. Um, yeah. I don't know if the jam fell into that, but I could be totally wrong. Boys Don't Cry was a good one. Zach, Thank you've seen me cry enough times as a boy, though. And a man. Love song by the Cure. I'm not, yeah, me, I don't know. I'd have to check. Jack, the Smiths, what are your feet? Jack, oh, you're asking Jack. I haven't listened to them yet, Jason. <clears throat> Remember the Cure at Customs? That was interesting. Hmm. We got 42 people watching. This. We did an like overview and ranked the Cure album for a Gunkles episode. Oh, cool. I'll check that out, Richard. Yeah, Watch that'd that. be great. If in, anybody watching doesn't f- watch uh, Calvin Wazoo's channel, they should. Try Disintegration by the Cure, Glenn. A lot of atmosphere. Oh, okay. Start with Wish for the Cure. All you need to get... Scott Walker's another name I hear all the time, and I know nothing about this artist. But I hear his name come up a lot. I'm writing that down. Dan knows his shit. Standing on the beach, best of us, good to start with the Cure. The Cure, a lot of wow, there's a lot of Cure fans out here. I know, like the Cure and the Smiths, too. Like only twenty five band in the eighties. I have zero clue about. I feel bad about that. Wow. Okay, I think it's my turn. Trevor, only 25 thumbs. <laughs> Thanks for reminding. Okay, here's one Sam's going to like. <laughs> Another name I have heard forever, and I know he was in the Drive-By Truckers, who I'm kind of a casual mm-hmm. fan of, Jason Isbell. 
Ah. I listen to a note of this guy's music. And I hear his name all the time. And I heard Sam mention him the other day with his new, the latest album was in your top. Weather veins. Well, Weather veins. stay tuned to Massey's Main Entertainment tomorrow. So he, has, so he has nine studio albums. And I've never heard a, a single note of any of them. Where do I start? My, my brother is in the chat right now having a gorgasm because he's Yeah, he just it. said Jason is the best. Um, <laughs> and he so didn't mean you, Jason. It's, he meant it's, Jason Isbell. It's funny. Maybe. maybe. I, uh, I didn't get into Isbell until about March of 23. Um, and I was I was always like anti because he hangs out with he, – he was hanging out with like John Prine. Because like if you – I think the Tree of Forgiveness album, Isbell's all over that record. He's all over the early Justin Towns oral records. They were good friends. Um, Isbell dealt with addiction, and then he you know obviously came out of it. The album Southeastern. Stay tuned to Massey's Men Entertainment tomorrow. Um, this album, uh, Southeastern, is all about his coming clean and, and, so, and sobering up. Um, he, he, he draws heavily from Tom Petty. Um, the album Reunions is probably a little bit more rocky. Um, Southeastern is like his magnum opus, like in terms of songwriting. That's like, that's got the big hit with Cover Me Up on it. Um, it has Super 8 on there. Um, relatively easy. They're just really, really solid, like really like makes you think kind of songs in terms of like, you can relate to somebody that's had addiction or one of the songs on the album is called Elephant, which is about somebody with cancer and just kind of her making the last of her days memorable by, you know, drinking a little, you know, getting high, listening to her favorite songs with her husband, um, just to take her mind off the pain of, of the elephant in the room. Um, the Weather Veins is very good. It's got some really good stuff on it, but I would always start – I mean, I would start with Southeastern. Um, Nashville Sound is good, like Zach said um, in the comments. He also did, he also did an album, um, the, the Georgia album, which – is, is a is a covers album. He sings lead on about a third of the songs, and the rest of them are, are guests. But he does a really good version of "Night Swimming" by um, REM on that song on that album. Oh, really? What album's that? It's called the Georgia album or, or oh, Georgia yeah. Blue. Um, he, he did it during the during the election. He was like, if Georgia, if if they vote blue in Georgia, I'll do a, I'll do an EP or an album based around Georgia artists or Georgia songs. So like you know, "Midnight Train to Georgia" is on it. George on my mind. Okay. He, he covers a bunch, and like REM is on. Like he covers REM songs. Um, but yeah, I mean, Southeastern reunions, Nashville Sound, any of those albums, hang out there. Yeah, and I then, got yeah. Cool. I mean, because his and his band live, he's a live man. I mean, his guitar tone is unbelievable live. It's really? so good, so clean. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I gotta check them out. You do. My, We're back. My, yeah, I was just going to write two seconds. Funny, because my brother actually sent me a couple of Jason Isbell records, not Southeastern, but a couple of those other ones. And I like him. I don't think anybody doubts that he is, like, one of the best songwriters of this current generation. I mean, like, his songwriting, his lyrics, all that is just outstanding. Um, and, and they were great. So uh, it, it's just one of those things of it, it might just be slightly outside of my current, like, leaning, like, it, it's definitely Americana, but leans a little bit more country for me. But that's also coming from like somebody who loves weird, quirky British prog. So, yeah, cool. Jason, you're up, buddy. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get one more round in, I think. This is the last one. Okay, I'll, I'll bring out the I'll bring out the jaw dropper here. I don't own anything by this band. However, of all the bands I mentioned, I know them better than the other ones. Alex, I'm leaning on you here. Um, if I was to buy one album from this band, only one album, not obviously not a comp. What Rush album do I buy? Whoa. You stole what I was gonna say, man. I was gonna say Rush. As, look, as two Canadians, you two should be ashamed. Okay, here's no. my history with Rush. Here's my history with Rush. Growing I need up, to explain myself too, so you go first. You go, I'll let me go first. So, growing up, Rush was like. The band that was on the radio way too much, and it became like this thing that you hate, almost like in the eighties and nineties, almost like Wonderwall, almost like Nickelback. Like you just hated Ooh, yeah. them, regardless <laughs> really? of whether you liked them, wow. whether you knew anything about them or not. 
you just, as a Canadian, you were just like, oh, Rush, oh, whatever. Because Giddy Lee looks like a friggin' vulture and he's weird but, and whatever else, right? Sorry, but, sorry, to interrupt, but, sorry to interrupt, Jason. I'm curious, like, were you here? Was it like Limelight and Free Will? Yeah, like, all, all the classic Rush stuff, right? Which yeah. I took a, you know, 100% fall on the sword here. I took a total 180 and I was very ignorant about it all. I watched a documentary on Rush that changed everything in one watch i don't remember what it was called there's only so many out there i'm sure yeah it's a great documentary but, it's and opened up my eyes to how each of the three were as musicians and then it, you know i was and i was old enough to kind of be a little more patriotic and appreciate hey look this is canada's freaking you know you know answer to you know prog and rock and everything else and and i'm you know i'm not all in on them obviously because i don't i need to own an album i don't own an album yet but I play their greatest hits a lot. I rather stream it. But anyway, I want to buy one album. Well, I'm, I'm going to buy more. But if I'm going to buy one, my question for the group is, what album does someone jump I got Russia? three, so I'll let Alex go. Let, let, or, let, Rob let, or let me offer my excuse as well. I'm a lot, okay. and I was going to say Rush as well. And, and embarrassingly so, because I pride myself on being the Canadian music guy. I love all the hits. There's, any Rush song I've heard, I've loved it. But I'm kind of like Jason. I'm, I, every hour on the radio, there was a bloody Rush song, and I and it was just kind of like, it's great. But I, you know, I've heard enough, and I just I got sick of it and never bothered to buy a Rush album. I think they're amazing. I think they are the second best band to ever come out of Canada. Um, I just who's don't know who's the first. The Blue band. Blue. I say Blue Rodeo would have had a drink to that. No. Band. The band. I mean, um, the band is really from Arkansas. Fuck, they are not. They're from Stratford, Ontario. <laughs> Alex, America. USA. <laughs> fuck off. You guys don't know. Leave on carry them home. Let's go. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Leave on had to come to Canada to to get a band. Anyway, go. anyway, back to Rush. Go. So, yeah. I like Rush. It's just I've never bothered to get into them just because I got tired of hearing them. And now I'm like, you know what? I really, I need, I need, I need to get in there because I know I'm missing out on a million awesome songs. Yeah. So that's my excuse. So, so I, I, of course, nothing is an easy answer because, like um, all the bands that we talked about, especially bands that had, you know, I think Rush put out 19 studio albums, and there are eras. Um, Rob knows about eras. He's all about the eras. <laughs> so, um, and so. You know, it, for me, like, I'm a prog nerd. Like, progressive rock is my favorite genre. So my favorite Rush albums that I gravitate towards are their super proggy ones. That's not necessarily what I would recommend for somebody who is in your position. Just knowing both Jason and Rob, like, that you are not prog nerds, right? Well, and so, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I know. Nope. You're go ahead, there. go ahead. Um, so, but, but I'm also reflecting some of the opinions in the chat, too, because, like, you know, like, a lot of them are, like, like Hemispheres and Farewell to Kings, in terms of, like, prog records, are flawless. I love them. I think for the sake of this, what you're looking for is I want to marry the complexity and the virtuosity and everything that makes Rush great, also with the accessibility and the appeal and the good songs and all those things. You and I think I'm going to echo Glenn here, case here that, you know, moving pictures. Yes. Is it has all of that. And also I would say, cause I can't just give one would be permanent waves. Permanent waves was the bridge between farewell to Kings hemisphere, proggy, everything into where they would go into the eighties, which is what would be, uh, moving pictures would start off. So I think for people in your position, because you're going to get a couple of the hits on there, right? Like you're going to get limelight. Um, you're going to get that type of stuff, but you're also going to give like some of these epics of like, Oh my gosh, like these guys are crazy. Like, I mean, some of those, um, you know, you're going to get Tom Sawyer on moving pictures as well. Great. We all know that one, but you're also going to get some deep cuts that are incredible. So I would go permanent waves and moving pictures. Done. Wrote them down. I think you, you Glenn, the best. In. I would say those two you dead on. Sweet. Moving pictures would be my number one of those two, but uh, yeah. Hey, Thank Jason, you. perhaps for our next album exchange, you and I should both review the same <laughs> Rush album. Awesome. Let's do it. Make a note. These Let's guys are the most, they are like 
Geddy Lee to me is one of the most talented musicians on the planet. I don't know how that man does everything at once. I just don't know how yeah. anybody can do that. Sing, play the bass with all these crazy, like, I mean, he uses it like a lead instrument and uh, then and do a keyboard thing. And he's got a monster pile of pedals that he's trying to push at the same time. I mean, the guy's you got to have four brains. My wife complains I can't <laughs> breathe and think at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for anybody who's interested and is not reading it, Getty Lee's book, My F and Life, which is out now, is a must read. It is so good. Like, I, I'm devouring it. I got it for Christmas, and I, I think I got about 20 pages left. It is fantastic. Wow. Well, if, if, if we had American postal rates, Glenn, I'd say send it my way, but that would probably cost you 50 bucks, and I'll just buy the damn book. Yeah, just buy the book off Amazon. Uh, and he, yeah. or Glenn could buy you the book off Amazon with all his YouTube money. Oh, go back to that comment, mahogany. Yeah, Richard. all my YouTube yeah. money, all my thirty bucks. <laughs> How do I buy the book in six times. bucks? <laughs> Hemispheres, yeah. Um, I, I agree with what uh, Alex is saying, though. Like some of it's just, you know, it's proggy, right? Twenty-one, twelve, uh, farewell the kings. Uh, they're great records. Musicians on the debut and before the band got huge. John Rutsey, yes, that's right. Moving pictures, yeah, and, right? And, and that's a sorry to interrupt on on Glenn because I know this popped up. I think Richard Calvin was who said this of the, the debut is an outstanding record. It, it just sounds nothing like the rest of the catalog. Like, yeah, you know, it's just not. It's an outstanding record, but it doesn't sound like what we would know Rush to become. Beyond the Lighted States, that's the name of the documentary. Yeah, great documentary. Oh, it was so cool. It was like them driving around, exploring their hometown, talking about yeah. it. Like, it was just so humble. They're, they're so humble. Like Yeah. Uh, this is important. Curtis is in the same boat as Jason and I. He's he's of the same age as us and, and has not delved into Rush until now. So we're not total freaks, Jason. No. Uh, it, it's weird, eh? Like, I, it growing up, it was very much – it was just programmed to yeah. if you weren't like a if you weren't a rush fan when they were big then you just hated them because you were inundated with it and yes. you had to like them yeah and then anyway whatever at the end of the day i was wrong and now i'm hopefully going to be right but right yeah. rambling jack elliott's name keeps coming up one of the yeah. i mean he was a disciple of woody guthrie and bob dylan learned so much from rambling jack and uh, that's right um I got a chance when I was working at Mariposa to drive Jack, uh, Ramblin' Jack around. And, and uh, the one story I remember telling uh, Sam was that I didn't know it, but him and Tom Waits were great friends. And Jack liked to drive uh, semi tra trucks. And every year they would take a semi truck and him and Tom Waits would drive across the country in a <laughs> semi. Can you imagine those just being in the cab with those guys telling stories? Whew. I feel permanent, permanent ways is a nice safe start. Yeah, Fly by Night. Yeah, that's a great album too. They're all they're all so good. I got rid of him of years because it was too much for me. Ah. Yes, Fly by Night is another good one. I kind of saw them during that tour. My friend was in that doc. Ah, cool. My favorite game is Skinny Puppy. You know those guys? Yep. Permanent Waves is a sleeper. He's a rush nerd. Yeah, Signals is good too. Um, I think that's the next one coming out on a 40th anniversary thing or something, isn't it? Signals or 50th or whatever. Mm -hmm. Alice is exactly what I said. I see you, Tim. Rush, amazing musician, but never be able to get past Getty's vocals. Yeah, it they it is it's the hardest part in getting used to Rush for sure. Once you get it, you get it. But if you're squeaky feet, yeah, I think out in New York, I think. <laughs> Dan. First, I thought Neil Peart was the main <laughs> singer for Yes, you know, songwriter <laughs> or lyricist. Getty's a great show with bass players on Parliament. Oh, yeah, God. I'm dying to see that. When I go to Florida, I'm going to check that out. My daughter has part permanent plus. No other Canadian band history has ever had the run that Rush has. No, there. What, what's he referring to there? 
is there a string of like a series of albums that Rush was like, holy shit, how did they do this? Or I think those just... one that that run, yeah, from the yeah, I mean, you could argue. Well, you could argue a lot of things, and I'm probably a little bit more open on these things. But you know, regardless of the critical, how they're critically viewed, I mean, I would argue everything from their debut. Through Sigma. <laughs> That's a great comment. That's a great comment. <laughs> no, I saw Lyndon. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, there is. Yeah, I, mean, I would say, I mean, their debut through, undoubtedly through Signals, and you could include things, uh, you could potentially, I've even grown to love things like Power Windows, um, are, uh, and I think there was one right before that, I can't think of it right now. Are, I mean, just great. And I mean, that's releasing damn near a record every year. I mean, it wasn't wow. like it was just back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. Don't, don't you yeah. love how, like, you know, these conversations, obviously, and like you could find, like, this is a great, like, topic for tonight to know that, like, there's artists out there that are, that are long gone in the sense of productivity that you're diving into now. And it's still as exciting as if it was a brand new artist, right? Like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fun to think about. Like to know that I have all these rush albums, like Alex said, I don't know any deep cuts. I know the hits and that's it. Right. I know 2112 is an album and I know the hits and that's about it. Damn here. Wow. Very cool. Uh, who just said rush? Yeah. Sam wise. Jason. Well, and I agree. Agree. So we're on oh, to okay. Sam. Okay. We're sk skipping to Sam. Uh, this one is specifically for Glenn because I know that, um, I mean, every offshoot of this group um, goes into a deep rabbit hole, cause, and mostly because of live stuff, and that's the Grateful Dead. But I'm not going to ask about the Grateful Dead. I want to know about the Jerry Garcia band or, yeah. or, any, or any kind of you know, iteration of solo uh, Jerry that you can you know throw upon me. Because, I mean, obviously, I love his acoustic stuff. I've heard a couple of the albums with David Grisman. Um, and like some like the pizza, the pizza tapes. Oh, the pizza tape. Well, that's a bit too noodly for you, I think. <laughs> it can be, but I mean, a lot of that's a, it's very acoustic, which I don't mind. Um, so like that's just that's just kind of where I'm leaning. So my expert is gone. Well, that's it, everybody. Good night. Yeah, everybody, subscribe to Rob. Are you going to come to our after party? I have a live stream after party for schedule. real. Yeah, yeah, I will. Just uh, you got to give me a few minutes, but I will join you. You need a few minutes. You got to go hang out with your Taylor Swift record, or what? Well, I could. Are you gonna <laughs> hang out with yours? I was gonna say it wouldn't take you a few minutes, okay? <laughs> uh, maybe only two. Stop, Sam. Here's where you're going. <laughs> the Jerry Garcia Acoustic Band. Ooh, Ooh. that's got to be good. I'm right there. That is amazing. And they even do a live version of Ripple on here too, which is really nice. They do. Uh, this is great. It's all kind of uh, okay. Uh, I don't know. What to call it. A lot of a lot of traditional type folky songs, but just it's just uh, acoustic guitar, mandolin, uh, double bass, and fiddle. And it's, okay, so here's the band. And yeah, also, they did another album called Ragged but Right. So that 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 configuration of Jerry Garcia's band is great. The rest Can of it's kind of gaming and stuff, but there, but like any, there's a whole bunch of a series called Garcia Live, and there's volume one yeah. up to like volume 20 now. I know one's about to come out. I get and ads for it. Are, and it, just grab any of them, they're all pretty much the same set list. What <laughs> it's can a you different year? So, so Glenn, Glenn, a guns to your head, you have to explain Jerry Gus Garcia in 30 seconds. Talk about Jerry Garcia. Well, Jerry Garcia started out as a banjo player, right? He was a he was a folky, mm -hmm. uh. Uh, a, ban a banjo player into bluegrass music. That's where he started out playing. And uh, that's when he was hanging out with David Grisman and they would just travel around going to bluegrass festivals and stuff. That's what they were into. And then uh, he they started a jug band after that and then the Beatles came out and then they said, well, let's get some electric instruments and that's when they formed the Grateful Dead. So when he wasn't playing, Jerry Garcia just lived to play music. That's all he ever wanted to do. And when the dead weren't busy, he was playing with, he had his Jerry Garcia band. So, and uh, there's, uh, 
he played with a guy named Merle Sanders, who's like a uh, Hammond organ oh, guy. Man. So there's the, uh, the albums he did with Merle Sanders, which are very kind of like, uh, that's all right, mama. And they do well, like uh, they just do a bunch of like kind of rock and soul and blues songs and stuff. And then he did his acoustic stuff. And then he got back together with uh, David Grisman towards the end of his life. And they released all those albums. The best one's called Garcia Grisman. That's, that's a great one. He does, they do a cover of BB uh, King's uh, what's his big hit? Thrill is, gone. Thrill is gone. They do a cover of that. And Grisman's still out there doing it. And they do uh, okay. another version of Friend of the Devil on it. So, mm. I mean, Jerry's got some, tons of stuff, like albums where he played. They, there's an album called So What, where him and Grisman did uh, Miles Davis tunes on oh, mandolin wow. and guitar. It's, it's a That's great cool. album. I can't believe how you just nailed that. I put you on the spot talking about Jerry Garcia, and you just gave, like, the abridged Wikipedia version. That was oh. fucking impressive. <laughs> That's why he's from the basement, yo. Holy yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well, Jerry, Jerry did loom over him for years and years behind that chair. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. I'll, I'll check it out. Wow. Who's that leave, Rob? Or who's that, Glenn? No, I think up. Alex and Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. Here's uh, uh, Joel. I know Joel's a fan. Yeah, uh, Gary Garcia Live 20 is great. Yeah, the newest one. So, but they're all pretty much like a lot of times they do a lot of Dylan songs, Sam's. They do like, uh, um, if you see her, say hello, and forever young, and do all they all do all kinds of. Oh yeah! If you see her, say hello. <laughs> Stomp and Tom, was he in yet? Rush? Stomp and Tom. Stomp and Tom. I got stories about that guy, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Is it about potatoes? I've been to Skinner's no, Pond. Aunt lives right next to him, or like, I, next I've to been his, to Skinner's uh, Pond where he would grew up and. My family is from Skinner's Pond. <laughs> oh, really? I have fa I have dad's side of the family is from that part of PEI. And my aunt lives right next to his old schoolhouse in Skinner's Pond. And when we would go to PEI to visit my family, we would stay at my aunt's house in Skinner's Pond every time. I'm very familiar with the stomping. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, my yeah. see, my brother, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law live in uh, just outside of Tignish. That's where my family is from. Oh my God, Glenn! Holy shit! Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. Yeah, you the Gadets. You know all there's the, the name. Well, yeah, there's like a million of them. Goodies there, but yes, Gadet. Yeah. Yeah, my my brother-in-law's name's Charlie Gadet. Yeah, and the, like there's like a million of them, and that they, there's so many Gadets. They're like they they all have a nickname, so no one calls anybody like. If you said Charlie Gadet, nobody knows, but they they all have a weird little nickname that goes with Gadet. So the person is. It's really... to you. I'm sure we know the same people. That's awesome. And That's... next week after the genetics test, we find out that Glenn is really <laughs> Jason's grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Okay. So uh, Alex's turn. Well, yeah. So my, my final kind of pick is. Um, I think a bit of like a category, but also I'm going to highlight one specific band. And I'm also, rec I'll recognize too that I think this band is very, very popular amongst the younger to middle aged crew. And I am sorry for all the great people watching out there, or at least who are in the comments. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's like, we got people who are like, I saw the Beatles live in 62. So like, I don't know if this will mean anything, but for me, I struggle buying. Th there are certain bands that I love, but I think that they're what I'm most passionate about and enthusiastic about is their live show. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna buy something by them, I want it to be the live recording, right? So like jam bands and stuff like that, right? Like, um, you know, for example, like Jason, you brought it up earlier in uh, in your vinyl tag video, right? Like I actually love the Dave Matthews Band, but if I'm gonna buy a Dave Matthews Band record. I want it to be a live show. I want them to just rip it. Like, I love that type of stuff. Same thing with like bands like Umphreys McGee. I love Umphreys McGee. You're out of the Chicago. only other human being I know who likes those guys. You like Umphreys, Glenn? Love them. I'm going to see them here in a couple weeks. Oh. I've, seen, I've seen them three times. Love them. I've never guys. seen them. And you guys, just, I mean, freaking proximity to good concerts. Just Glenn, I mean, they're just one of the best live bands. I mean, insane. Oh, but like, I don't. I don't own any of their studio records. I've They're got fun. their live album live at the Mirage. That's all you need. Oh, that's the greatest album on on earth. 
I mean, yeah, I love Umphreys McGee. Um, <laughs> oh, so, so there's some of those, but the band I'm going to go Jason with. Jason and I are related, and we both know Umphreys McGee. <laughs> this is good a night. Well, and they just had – Umphreys McGee in Chicago just had their New Year's – they always do a New Year's Eve series of shows all three nights. And some of you might know I've talked a lot about the band Dream Theater, and I've talked a lot about my favorite drummer, Mike Portnoy. Well – Umphrey's McGee, Umphrey McGee's drummer was getting soldier, uh, shoulder surgery. So they had a, a, a rotating set of drummers that would play their sets during their New Year's Eve set. And Mike Pornoy was one of them. So here's, you know, Mike's coming from like a progressive metal background. He's sitting in with Umphrey's McGee. I, I almost drove to Chicago to see that. I was going to stay wow. with uh, Steve. But um, so the band I'm going to go with, and I don't, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about them. I know next to nothing about this band other than they're from Australia. They release about 65 records a year, but I think they're all live records. I know who you're going to say. The you know Wiggles. Going. The Wiggles. So the <laughs> I've seen the Wiggles twice. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the band I'm going to go with is King Gizzard and the Lizard oh Wizard. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. I have heard so much about these guys and how they tiptoe into every genre ever, and they're such a great live show. And yeah, Richard knew I was going. I've just heard so much. And I also, again, recognize like, are they a band where I would get as much worth out of it buying a studio record? Or are they a band where it's like, nah, man, like this is the definitive couple of live records. So I know next to nothing about them uh, other than just what people have talked about. Um, but yeah, I got, I got nothing. So I'm depending on some comments here because something tells me Sam's not a fan, but uh, I am. Yeah, it's like he, I just like a that, lizard like, wizard, Mike, you know. Mike at the in groove mentions them every week on his like what's new, right? right? Like the ongoing joke is them and Neil Young, right? Like yes. every week, it's like there's got to be a King Giz or, or, or you know, um, and so it's like I, I just if people out there have any idea, um, you know, yeah, let me know. But I don't um, know where you would start with a band that has so many albums out, like. I don't, like well, I guess the same could be said for the Dead and so many other bands, but like King Gizzard just seems to be like, perv- like just an unbelievable output. Oh yeah, I, yeah, and it's yeah. I mean, they're doing like what? Like I feel like they're releasing five or six, which you know that's the not to call them a jam band because I, I I feel like they're probably deeper than that. But you know, it's like Umphreys McGee. I love them. They're one of my favorite bands. But like much like the dead and all these other bands is like, yeah, they have the setup that they are recording every single show that they record. And then at the end of a couple months, they pull together all the best bits from all the best shows and they put a record up. Like that's very different than people going into a studio and writing new music. Right. So like, um, I, I, uh, yeah, I just, I have no idea where to go with, uh, with King Gizzard and the lizard wizard. Um, other than there's just a million of them. Yeah. I had one of their albums and I can't remember what the hell it was. And then I, I don't know, I can't figure out where it, I misplaced it somewhere and I can't find it, but it was like a jammy psychedelic kind of a thing. But I think they're all over the place. I think they're all, they do a lot of different stuff. Yeah. But uh, if anybody yeah. watching out there's a fan. Yeah, January. anybody out there, feel free to just send me those Get records. The start, because again, that's a, like a that's a, that's a really tough catalog. It's like you said, there's like sixty albums or so. It's freaking amazing. Dude, um, I before, a couple things before, <laughs> before I go, Sam, I should mention this album too. Jerry Garcia's. It's just called Garcia. That's the first one, isn't it? That's, that's yeah. Like, that's a really good album. That's that's. Doesn't that, does that have a that has Keith and Donna on it? Doesn't it? Mm, not that you'd notice. I got if they're on so it, you wouldn't to notice. To. But um a lot of great songs on this, like uh Sugary and uh Deal, Bird Song. Yeah, Diesel. all it's all became dead songs. Yeah. Um Humphreys McGee, Alex, I just wanted to show you. I've got every once in a while I find them on uh uh Amazon warehouse sales for like cheap, like 15 bucks. Hell yeah. Humphreys, Humphreys McGee album. So I got I got this one. I don't even know what the hell it's called. Man, the now that is the one studio oh, album I, I love. That was the first Mantis. record I heard. It's probably oh, oh Mantis is so good. Yeah, and I got this one too. You walk uh 
you walked up shaking in your boots, but you still stood tall and left a raging bull? <laughs> Don't know that one. They're great. <laughs> yeah. But killer band, great musicians. Uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. of course, what did I just do with the... Oh, here. That's the... This live album is freaking fantastic. That live at the Mirage. So good. Oh. Outstanding. That whole first part when they're talking about being in the kitchen and all that stuff, it just oh, starts off all acoustic and everything and turns into this electric jam. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Okay. My last one is somebody I've already started my journey with late in the year because I picked up this freaking thing it at a used store. <laughs> was Ian Hunter's You're Never Alone with a Schizophrenic, that 30th anniversary thing. And now I was I had this on vinyl already. I mean, I'm, I'm very familiar with Ian Hunter to a point. But when I re this renewed my love for this guy, this album's so good. Then I just started picking crap up, and I got six albums of his. Mm. But he has like uh, twenty-one albums. So uh, yeah, I'm just uh, it's 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 going to be a big long journey here. But I am absolutely freaking hooked on this guy. I just picked this up for six bucks. The vinyl for uh, nice. all of the good ones are taken. And again, I had uh, I already had uh, schizophrenic on vinyl, and I had the live album on vinyl. Heck so yeah. all the studio stuff, and the the one he put out last year, Defiance Part One, I got to get. Yeah, that's got so, Mike Campbell on it, and people like that. Ian Hunter is definitely my uh, my main guy right now. Oh, first, yeah, it's, yeah. Jeff said first Caravan, now Ian Hunter. <laughs> I mean, That's they're basically the same. Are you, in, you like Caravan, Alex? I love Caravan, yeah. Me too. Yep. Only one I'm missing is is the one that you show all the time. Uh, if I could do it all over again, I'd do it all, oh, over, all over you. Have you seen that box yeah, set what? that I got? I've seen that box set that you've gotten. Heck yeah. yeah. It's crazy. 36 yep. CDs. Uh, yeah, That's the name of the record, Rob. Rob's yeah. laughing while you're talking. I'm sorry, Jason... It's his fault. J Jason sending <laughs> goofy memes again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that is the funniest one I've ever read. <clears throat> oh boy. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you. Rob's up to nine ninety four. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you, you, everybody. Even after that outburst. <clears throat> Dan, are you in the Pacific Northwest? Where is? No, oh, Dan's in. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Dan's in BC, I think. First caravan, now Ian Hunter. Yeah, we've run the gamut now. Well, you know, to straight well, rock. For those interested, I have a StreamYard account now, and I was going to host an after-party stream on my channel. Dude. And you're the first, the first one ever. Jason's going to be there. Uh, Rob uh, might be there after he takes care of a few personal things. I might Sam, join you. We'll see. I'll be there in about. I'll be there in about ten minutes. All right, now. Yeah. The Leafs we'll are on. So I'm not sure. We'll see. All right, now. Y'all want to um, talk about what you got going on, real quick? Humphreys McGee, you gotta no. find the live this local band does Oklahoma <laughs> and continue a set outstanding. Oh, oh awesome. Boy, yeah. we're finding some Humphreys. <laughs> I thought I was the only freaking guy in the world who'd ever heard of these guys. Oh, I love them, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, they'll be Glenn, they'll be here in Columbus uh, in about a month. I'll be That's I got my tickets. Cool. So buy me a ticket and I'll drive down. Okay. I have a story about the caravan box set because the record has <laughs> like been probably released for some information. Ooh. That's interesting. Do you actually have the set there, Richard? I'll come to the comments, Alex. JB, uh, subscribed. Are we up to four ninety five now? Nine nine ninety five. I'm five away. I got to uh, get on the live stream tonight, then. Okay. There's, see it on the there's thirty four people watching. Can you all just email one friend and say, <laughs> "Did you go on the Sam Saint John?" We could get Rob up to like one. To a thousand and twenty in a matter of seconds. I don't want him to catch up to me too quick. I'm kidding. You're way ahead of me, Sam. I'm kidding. Man, no, that's we, so close. We need to get him there. Wow, that's um, too way too close. Yeah, around the horn there, uh, Sam. You want to talk? And you know what's going to happen, Rob? You're going to hit a thousand. 
You're going to be all excited. And the next day you're going to wake up and YouTube will have taken three of them away. And yeah, that's exactly what will happen. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's go around the horn. Everybody want to say good night and what they're up to? Or do you just... yeah, go Jason, ahead, Jason. We won't worry about Jason. He's His gummies Jason are kicking in, I think. He said Jason too much a video, which is a big deal. Yeah, go on. Um, nope, I don't think they used what they asked me about and I didn't get the box set. I asked if they'd release it on vinyl and they said no and that sort of ended the conversation. Oh, a vinyl snob, Richard, I didn't know. It's okay. We still love you. Saw Ian Hunter playing a small bar in London. Shades on, I guess. He always has shades on. Okay, Sam, what are you up to? Exciting. Um, well, Rob mentioned at the beginning of the, of the, the stream here, we have a, a podcast up um, audio. Rob's going to have the video up on his channel day or two. Uh, depends how long I'm on Alex's after party tonight. I have to render the video and stuff, so it'll probably get uploaded tomorrow night. <laughs> so we talk about um, vinyl collecting for multi-generations and just how we were influenced by parents, family, that sort of thing. Um, I, I did mention I've got a video coming up on Massey's Main Entertainment. He said tomorrow around noon uh, Eastern time. Um, so check out uh, Massey's Main Entertainment. We're going to talk about uh, Jason Isbell record. Um, I have done a bunch of end of the year videos on my channel. I have one coming up tomorrow. And then I will get to my vinyl tag, which will probably be yes. Friday. Um, so I've got, I've, I went through all my answers today. So I've got it on a sheet. Um, I just got to record it. Um, it might be, I might, I'll probably film it tomorrow afternoon and then post it Friday. I hope, fingers crossed, that's the fall goes accordingly. Um, so I've got a lot, again, like three or four new videos on my channel, all about 2023. Um, so check it out. And again, check out the podcast. Check out Massey's Man Entertainment tomorrow. And uh, yeah, a lot a lot coming down early in 2024 here. Awesome. Yeah. Alex? Uh, yeah. So, you know, jumped on the Vinyl Tag 2024 um, stuff. Ani, I... Truthfully, I said this in the video, but it's true. I was really looking forward to this because I know like what a, you know, it's it's such like a meaningful, Jason, you might be on the same kind of boat, right? Of like, yeah. it, it's a great time for new channels to get going. You know, we started our channel, you know, uh, several months ago, whatever it was. And, and I've already seen, not like this, you know, matters, but like, it's been cool to see some of the subs jump up for me. Um, like I... I think I've gone up like 30 subs in the last like three days. So, wow, wow. Um, so, you know, again, it's just really cool, but also like I've subbed to probably 37 other channels in the last three days as well. So um, it's just been great. I think what my next video might be, you know, Glenn did his uh, 24 uh, favorite albums from 1974 celebrating 50 years. I know some other channels are doing some like 74 type things. Glenn, I tried to do it. Uh, I tried to like go through and pick my 24 and I was looking through my, I was like, I have 137 records from 1974. Wow. Ooh. And, and I really, really, really like to love probably a hundred of them. So I, I it's just going to be impossible. So I might do, I hey, might do extend two it. Parts and do, do two or three parts and do a top 100. Yeah, I might I might do that, and I might separate out some live albums. You know, I might do some different things, but I, I really am planning on doing like a fifty years of nineteen seventy four album for cool. little highlights. So yeah, that's my hope. Jason, uh, yeah, I did the vinyl tag as well. Just like Alex said, it was like this was great because this is the first year I could you know participate in it. So the uh, my earbuds just died. Can you still hear me? Um, basically the. Uh, the first year I could do the vinyl tag and it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Holy shit. Like great job, Rob Walker. Like what a great time to do that. Yeah, every great... year he does this. It's awesome. Yeah. What a great <laughs> series of questions. I love that question about jumping into an album cover. Anyway. Yeah. That was interesting. Eh? Yeah. So good series of questions. Uh, I do have an idea for a video. I just got to buckle down and do it. Probably not tomorrow, but probably the next day I'll, uh, I'll put something out blues related. And uh, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, just while well, I got you here, Glenn, I love that uh, that album you sent me last week. The recommendation for Third what was it Third Eye? Oh, the Third Mind. Third Mind. Mm -hmm. Did you oh buy it? No, I just I just uh, streamed it uh, today, but I, I might have to. Like it was pretty oh, special. Pretty like the East West, I was super skeptical skeptical going into that because I love the song, the original, so much, and I still do like it better. But 
like what a wicked rendition and makes you really appreciate the other one anyway yes. so um yeah blues related video coming up probably in the next few days awesome rob well i mean as sam mentioned the podcast episode so for those who want the podcast episode you can get it on spotify apple google amazon wherever you get your podcasts the video i'll try and get it uploaded tomorrow night and then uh, i did my vinyl tag as well um coming up i've got um rachel just done a beatles vinyl tag so because i'm a beatles nerd i'm going to do that one and um uh, Frank Lander over at Channel 33 RPM out in uh, he's in Calgary or Winnipeg. He did a came up with a cool uh, 10 album challenge where he had his wife pull 10 albums that she wanted him to talk about. So mm. we're we're going to do the same one here, except my wife refuses to appear on camera, but she's pulled the 10 records. So I'm going to oh, do that cool. as well. So. Nice, that's good. And that's it. Oh, and and uh, thanks for everybody. I'm. This darn close to a thousand. Yeah, I, I, pre I appreciate everyone's support there. for that. Thank you. There's got to be five people out there who can give you a sub. Man, that's too We'll close. get there. We'll get there. Um, one thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that my New Year's resolution when it came to my music collection was to catalog it. I, I used to do it when I was a working man. And when I quit working in 2018, somehow that Excel spreadsheet just went by the wayside and I haven't. I have just let it go. And now I'm the overwhelming task of starting up a new Excel spreadsheet, all of CDs, all the vinyl. Do you guys catalog your collections at all? Discogs. Discogs. Discog I don't like, I, I tried, I find that tedious. I don't know what it is. It, it is not easy. It's, it's sure. tedious. Yeah. It's That's tedious. what I did when we had the first wave of lockdowns during the pandemic. Yeah, I but, cataloged yeah. everything in this guy. I, I tried I, a couple of times and I just gave up. I got so frustrated I, with it. I started yeah. early, so it was easy. But if I had like a thousand records to start now, I would probably just do my own thing with a Excel yeah. spreadsheet. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. But not like I've, I've, I spent, uh, I did the A's yesterday and it probably took me two hours. And I don't have a lot of A's. <laughs> and then today I did the some of the B's. I got up to Big Star. Like I did all my Beatles. I'm going, oh my God. It was just like. Ugh. Glenn, you should post like a classified on like Craigslist or something and be like old man looking for cataloger. I'm sure you'll get like some like, I don't know, well, Sam St. John will come by. and I'm do kind it of enjoying time. doing it. It's tedious, but I'm kind of enjoying. Uh, it's cathartic. At it. it is kind of cathartic. Yeah. The, the only plug that I'll. Well, I'm up to 996. Thanks. Um, oh. We're getting there. The only thing, uh, the benefit I'll say to Discogs, right, is it's very easy to, to track which pressing you've got. And I find that I use the Discogs app all the time. You know, you're at the store and you're like, do I have this record? Or what pressing do I have again? It's so much easier than, are you going to cart around a spreadsheet? Probably not. So the Discogs well, I, app. Yeah, but what I'll probably do is print it after I'm done and then just have it so. Print it. Are you an yeah. old man or something? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I have no other way. If I, what if I'm in a store? What am I going to look at? Your phone with Discogs. See, there you go. Yeah, but I don't, I'm not doing Discogs. I well, do you the other thing about it Discogs. Takes as, it would take as much time to do Discogs purpose. as it does to do your spreadsheet. I know. But the but nice thing that's about where you're, That's where I am, an old man. I'm comfortable with the Excel. But here, here's the, ni here's the nice I thing. I couldn't freaking figure it out. It was driving here's me nuts. For fuck's sakes. Here's the nice thing about <laughs> Discogs is if it's a record that has a barcode on it, you scan that barcode with your with your phone, it automatically pulls up that exact pressing yeah. of the album. You just sort of the collection. Sort of. Yeah, thank exactly. you. Sort of. Yeah, but Glenn's Nokia track phone can't do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Glenn okay. over there with his, land, his landline. Come yeah. on, you fuck. <laughs> well, my BlackBerry is still working. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, All right. Uh, All right, guys. Wow. Okay, well. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. have the link. Feel free Pop to join over me. to Beer and Vinyl if you want to continue the conversation. Thank you all for watching tonight. And it's uh, we're all looking forward to 2024. I think what we need to do is kind of come back and revisit this in maybe two, three, four weeks and go, what's our progress on some of these bands, right? After we give each other a couple of weeks to kind of maybe grab an album or something. That's a great show idea, Glenn. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> like an album exchange, yeah. 
Kind of. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We'll challenge each other on our journey, make sure we're pushing each other to actually, you know, pers pursue it rather than just talk about it. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. It's thanks awesome. for watching. amazing night. Thanks Thank for you, everybody, everybody, for watching. Go over to Beer and Vinyl and say, keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Right, take right. care. Yeah.